Hello VOD people, we're back. We're doing a little something different. We're not doing Dream Drop today. Maybe I'll come back to it again, but it has spurned me once more. But in the meantime, Ramsam has set up a best worlds bracket, a natural follow-up to all the other brackets Ramsam has provided us. And we'll be doing it uh, in the same way we did last time with the scenes bracket. It'll be um, as voted on by the chat. I will give my input, but I will only be worth one vote. Um, so that'll be how it goes. Let me get some uh, music playing. Got the Yule Log here. Um, let me know if that's too quiet or too loud. I want to have some festive tunes. Trying to make the December streams a little bit more festive, you know? So, um, got the crackle of the fireplace in Santa's workshop. It's lovely. You'll love it. Let me, uh, listen, if you haven't seen the Yule Log, it should become a family tradition. Uh, there it is right there, if you want to look at that for yourself. Um, okay. Well, let me, uh, zoom in a bit. And uh, Vodka will be running the polls, not in the background, but in the foreground, because it is Women's History Month. Um, no, I got it. You're good. Thank you so much, Google Docs. Yeah, let's uh, even zoom in more. Um, all right. Round one. We got Traverse Town versus Mysterious Tower. Traverse Town Cage 1, Mysterious Tower Cage 2. Um, easiest W of my life what for Traverse Town. Um, let's just send it through. Um, let, me, let me see this here first. Um, <laughs> Riku, wait a minute. I know that, like, we just saved the world from Xemnas, and you, like, broke your leg or whatever, and we're stranded in the dark margin, but remember that time you tried to kill me? Oh, sorry, I'm really sorry. I remember because, you know, Anson possessed me, and I I wasn't I wasn't be feeling myself. I, I, I'm really sorry about that. No, 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 no. Not that time. That time I can forgive. I'm talking about before that, in the entrance hall, not the grand hall. You were just completely yourself, and you tried to shoot me. Doll and Goofy, remember? We need to talk about this. All right, I uh, I think uh, maybe. Uh, oh, look a letter. Look at the, the bottle. Like I found a bottle in the water. <laughs> there you go. And then we have uh, a question. Can Presto be festive? I feel like he needs a, a, a some tin tinsel or a bow. Um, I can look around. Um, probably not today, but maybe for Saturday I can get something festive for Presto. All right, Traverse Town crushed Mysterious Tower. Only the Cage One haters, three of you in there, voted <laughs> for. Uh, Mysterious Tower. Moving along to... This is the round one, the uh, round of 64, so they're gonna be um, some blowouts. Um, we have Disney Castle in Cage 2 versus Twilight Town in Cage 3. The 8 versus the 9. So Rom seated uh, Twilight Town lower. Um, I know it's small, um, and I could see people voting for Disney Castle. Like, I would I would forgive it. Um, there's like that tantalizing nature of Disney Castle in Cage 1. Ha! Where you can't go to it, it's like floating there on the world map, just out of reach. And then in KH2, you can finally go to it. You were supposed to be able to play it in uh, KH1. There's a uh, beta footage of Sora running around in the uh, the colonnade. Um, Twilight Town, I know, disappointed people with its you know reduced size, but I thought it was so beautiful. Um, I had to like set my controller down and like marvel and like the NPCs walking around. It just felt so cozy. Like it's a better world than KH2, but. Um, the atmosphere is just like fucking off the charts in three. Like I just, it felt like like a warm blanket, you know. Um, so I would vote for Twilight Town. That's where I'm putting my vote. Looks like most of you are. Uh, 39 votes for that. 83 to 17 percent for Twilight Town. All right. So a minor upset there, um, as far as the seating is concerned. Next up, we have Cage One Halloween Town versus Cage Two Pride Lands. Um, that is an easy Halloween Town uh, in Cage One for me. Um, I'd even put uh, Cage 2 Halloween Town ahead of Pride Lands. And I love Lion King. That's my, you know, basic bitch fucking Charizard milk chocolate Disney movie. Like, that's my favorite. Um, but it's just, like, so bland, so boring. I know it's set in, like, the bad times where Scar is the uh, the king and there's no, you know, pretty scenery besides the Oasis. And even that is just, like, a generic fucking jungle environment. Like, the movie is so big and grand and colorful and it just has, like, nothing going on in the game. Um... And KH1 Halloween Town, like, it's a little backtracky. I think that's the worst part of it, is that you kind of just, like, slowly inch forward in the world and then go back. But, like, I love Oogie's Manor. I love, like, the main um, guillotine gate area. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, another blowout. 84% um, for KH1 Halloween Town. Um, and one of the better world designs in general in KH1, I would say, Halloween Town. And in the series. Um, Enchanted Dominion in BBS versus Arendelle in KH3. Um... Well, is Buffoon still here? Because Buffoon wrote that spicy but really well-argued take about Arendelle being a not not bad world um, in KH3. Um, 
it's still on the lower half for me, I will admit, but I have woken up to some of the positives about it. Enchanted Dominion was my second highest uh, Disney World in BBS. I love the field theme in Enchanted Dominion, the Silent Forest. Um, I love the art style of Sleeping Beauty in general. Um, I just think it looks beautiful, um, especially for, I mean, it was, when was it, like 1959, I think is when it came out. Um, it just looks great. Um, it's boring, um, but uh, Enchanted Dominion is the site of Terra's sort of, um, you know, moral event horizon, which is kind of falsified by Maleficent. Like, he didn't really... All right, there's Nutcracker, baby. Gotta skip the Nutcracker part. Listen, I wanted to put it in the Yule Log because it's in Dream Drop, but... Um... All right, there we go. Enchanted Dominion beats Arendelle. Um, that's going to be our first instance of a side game prevailing over a main title. We'll see if that uh, ever happens again throughout here. Um, speaking of which, we have another matchup from those two games. Um, Kingdom of COVID versus Land of Departure um, in BBS. Um, here's La Paz, La Pace. Um, um, yeah, you would think it would be. Um, well, Mandala, it's interesting because I always talk about this when we get to the music conversation. But, um, <laughs> P, Censor, and CK, um, you can take music into consideration. You can take whatever you want into consideration. You could just be like, well, I like Rapunzel and I don't like Erica, so I'm voting for the Kingdom of Corona. Um, you can do whatever you want. Um, every time we talk about music, I always laugh about how in the KH1 compendium, or the Heartless, I wanted to have this bit where the communist, or not, the, uh, the Soviet, Soviet Union um, national anthem played while the Neo Shadow bit was going because I joked about how, like, they shared their health, so they're, like, communists. Um, but I couldn't because the Soviet Union's national anthem, at least that performance of it, was uh, copyright um, held, so I couldn't do it. Um, and I was like, well, if that ain't the damnedest thing I've ever seen. Um, we are only a couple rounds into the, uh, the bracket so far. But it's really not about the song itself, it's about the performance of the song. Um, so. Bow, bow, bow. Um. <clears throat> Um, looks like Kingdom of Corona won over Land of Departure. That's also where my vote would have gone. Land of Departure, not one of the better um, starting out worlds in the series. I mean, I like the uh, the music. I like the general vibe of it, but you just don't spend enough time there. Um, you know, when it gets destroyed, like, it's it's sad in theory. Um, it was way more sad to see Destiny Islands get destroyed, and you had only been there for, you know, two days. But um, And that was at the beginning of the game. But Land of Departure, you know, you start there, you leave... And then uh, it gets destroyed, and you're like, well, they really have an attachment to it. All right, Cage 1 End of the World versus Cage 200 Acre Wood. That is an easy um, end of the world for me. Is Keynote here? It's Keynote! B I C T H. Um, I do like 100 Acre Wood in Cage 2. I might even prefer it to Cage 1 Wood. Um, mini games are way more fun. Um, I do like the, you know, the more um, physical parts of Cage 100 Acre Wood, like with the uh, bouncing spot, Muddy Pass, but, um, you know, the mini games themselves are really, I think I described them as like, you know, the mini games, mini game like things happen to occur while you're playing 100 Acre Wood, where it's like Cage 2, you just go, here's the mini game, you have like a new control scheme, like everything is, it's changed. Um, so, but end of the world, you know, uh, a masterclass in uh, weird Cage 1 energy. Um, really, I don't think it's even met again until, like, Final World Scala. And even then, like, it's not as, like, outwardly zany, um, but it comes close to that same feeling. Um, next we have BBS Neverland versus, um, Country of the Musketeers and Dream Drop. Um, that's an easy Neverland for me. Country of the Musketeers, one of the most abysmal choices, um, for a world, in my opinion. Um, just when you have, like, such a catalog, such a history of stuff. And you pick like this, and I'm sure they're fans of the movie, the fucking direct-to-DVD movie. Um, but I know it's like Neverland's third time out, but I think it's the best Neverland outing. Um, you're actually in it, like you're not stuck on like the rock faces or you know the ship. Um, it's got banger music. I do like the Country of the Musketeers music, um, but I, I I can't stand uh, Country of the Musketeers. World design that defeats itself. Neverland BBS has world design like. The uh, Rainbow Falls is one of the, the best rooms in that game with Aqua and the um, Double Flight. Um, so I'm voting for that. I forgot to vote for the past couple. <clears throat> but, you know, everything's been going my way so far. I, I don't want to uh, put my thumb on the scale. I want to talk things through, otherwise it's not interesting. But we got Eternal Moments in the Yule Log. That's right. <laughs> That's true. 
Um, there you go. Boom, boom. All right. <clears throat> sorry. I'm sorry for talking, talking over it. Um, Neverland wins 72 over 28. Put that through. Um, the Cage 3 Keyblade Graveyard versus the Cage 3 Lane of Departure. Um, both of them really are just kind of um, boss arenas in Cage 3. Um, but the Graveyard does have at least some interim activities. You know, you have the um, kind of pointless uh, things before the first uh, two boss fights with the, um, like, big stone things coming at Sora. Like, they're very easily negated. Um, it's almost, uh, it makes you wonder, like, why did they even bother? Um, and then Land of Departure is only there for, you know, that small amount of time before you fight uh, Vanitas. Carl's here! Um, so, I'm gonna, you know, go with the Graveyard. Um, yeah, 91 to 9 there for the Graveyard. Um, Alright, Cage 2 Twilight Town versus Cage 1's uh, Dive to the Heart. You know, I love Cage 1, um, but Twilight Town is the best Cage 2 world by my estimation. At least in terms of um, pure physical design and, and world layout. Um, Dive to the Heart, though, I mean, even seeding it at 16, I think, is too low. I mean, seeding it beneath Country of the Musketeers might be too much. <laughs> so, um, I will go Twilight Town, but, uh, you know, Dive to the Heart, uh, the mystique that is immediately imparted onto the player at that point uh when you you know first pick up control as sora um i don't think it's it's yet been matched in terms of like starting out a game i mean if it's the first game like you don't know what it's about yet it's it's kind of already in, in the favor of that but um yeah twilight town 75 to 25 though there were 13 people who voted for uh dive to the heart so i will send that through um uh, ddd traverse town versus cage one wonderland uh <clears throat> that's probably the most interesting one so far to me because um, I do think um, DDD Traverse Town is the best world in that game. Um, but I do... Oh, we gotta... <laughs> yeah, try that again. Uh, that one got ended too soon. Um, I do think Wonderland is some of the most creative uh, level design in the entire series. Um, like, already in Cage 1, so that means, like, in the entire series, you know? Um, the amount of secrets and, like, different nooks and crannies in Wonderland. Like, there are chests there that I didn't find until, you know, I was in my 20s. And um, I have been playing this game since 2002. So, yes, uh, we're very festive today. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. This one, this one's tough. Um, Traverse Town, you know, I love in KH1. Like, I love Traverse Town in KH1 more than I love Wonderland in that game. Um, and they do add, like, I always thought the post office area was like one of the coolest additions. That's another. If you just watch the KH3 um, boss ranking, where I call it like a, a doodle and notebook moment. It's like. I wonder, like, there's this post box. Is there, like, a big mail room in Traverse Town where all the mail goes? And, like, that is just, like, such an imaginative location. I love the 4th and 5th districts. That's another thing you would think about as a kid. Like, are there more districts that we're not seeing in Traverse Town? It's, like, cute stuff like that. Um, so, it's... Oh, it's very close. I don't even know where I'm going to vote yet. Um, it doesn't really matter because it's, it's already a, a six-point differential. Um, I was skewing towards Traverse Town, um, but... It looks like a Wonderland is in the lead. I'm gonna let this one run though. Um, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't hate either of them progressing. Like, you know, I'm not gonna be sad if Dream Drop doesn't make it into the uh, the round of 32. <laughs> so, um, I think Rom needs to put like uh, Symphony of Sorcery up against some kind of some clunker to make sure Dream Drop has representation. Um, Wonderland is kind of ugly. Like, I guess you could say it's like an artistic choice, but like. Uh, why is it so boxy? Like, why does everything look like a shoebox? Like, the environments, like, everything in the shoebox, there's fun stuff to play on. Um, but, like, Lotus Forest, like, it looks like a box that was painted and then, like, filled in with trees. Um, so. I guess, uh, oh boy, it's really close. Um, I'm gonna vote for Traverse Town. <laughs> just to, uh, just to make it interesting. Wonderland is one vote ahead, though. It is 51 to 49% right now. Um, yeah, it's still boxy and days encoded, yeah. Um, let's see, we have a little bit of time left. If anyone's gonna come through and tie it up here, or extend Wonderland's le Oh, it's tied up at the very end! <laughs> so, uh, what do we do now? Uh, it's a tie. Stop the steal. Um, do you just want to run it again? Uh, run it again for shorter time, Vodka, if you could? <clears throat> just do a rematch? Usually it would be like I could break the tie, but I voted. So, see you, cool guy. Thank you again for the uh, the blocket today. I appreciate that. What is this song? Arendelle, um Miracle on Ice. Now playing. 
Am I the tiebreaker though? Don't vote? Okay. I will not vote. I will break the tie. Well, that looks like there is an early surge of support for Traverse Town. Um, Miracle on Ice? <laughs> um, yeah, it looks like a lot of people... Uh, Wonder Dudes come back. <laughs> Crash Nebula! Uh, yeah, I agree. I agree with Lily Lychee. I think Traverse Town... I mean, it should peak there if they're going to introduce flow motion there. Um, chat is definitely biased towards me. They shouldn't be. I would think they wouldn't be. I would think they would want to thwart my plans. Um, oh, Reptar on Ice. So many good Nickelodeon um, ice skating performances. Uh, we'll do Solovank. I'll, I'll try my best. I want it to get pretty far. All right, looks like uh, in the in the runoff, Traverse Town won 60 to 40 percent that time, so we will advance that. I don't hate that. I think uh, that's fine. I do think Wonderland is uh, pretty pretty good though. Cage Two Olympus versus Cage One Monstro. Oh man. Um, well, I do have uh, Cage Two Olympus as my best Disney World in Cage Two. Um, it's my number four overall, but I do think Monstro in Cage One is so good. Um, yo, Henwen, and a posture check from Nachos, <laughs> thank you. Um, Henwen, thank you for the, uh, four months there. I'm sorry you got locked out. Um, I'm glad you found the keys. Welcome back. Uh, good to see you, and thank you again for those four months. Um, Monstro, I just think, like, ugh, it's so good in terms of, like, as a midpoint of KH1, like, it's the, the Sora and Riku drama, like, really coming to a head there, um, you know, you have, like, the Kyrie of it all, um, and, and, and Riku, like, exploring avenues. It starts getting into, like, what it means to have a heart there. Like, it's one of the first times, I think. Is there anything before that, really? Like, obviously, you have, like, the beginning of the game stuff, but I feel like Pinocchio... Yeah, and then you get into, like, um, you know, in Halloween Town with the Heartless and the monsters and everything like that. I'm um, like, how are they? Like, there's undead things that are alive. Like, I feel like Monstro Cage 1 might be, like, the genesis of, um, like, really more heady conversations about what it means to have a heart in Kingdom Hearts. Um, but I think it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be Cage 2 Olympus. And it probably should be, but I really do like Monstro in Cage 1. Um, and I like platforming in Monstro, but, uh, Cage 2 Olympus does have Orin. It's the, it's the best example of Final Fantasy integration in the series. Um, so I think that can't be, uh, understated. Um, what's this song now? This is, uh, The Dream. All right, next up, we have Cage 1 Olympus versus uh, Hunchback and a Dream Drop. Uh, really, the only thing we have going for Hunchback, I think, is the music. Um, I don't like Wargoyle. Um, I don't like the environments. I mean, I guess the uh, Court of Miracles is probably the most interesting spot. Um, Olympus is obviously only three rooms, but there's so much content packed into those three rooms. You have, you know, four cups. Um, two super bosses, um, a lot of powerful narrative stuff with Sora and his, you know, hero's journey. Um, it literally, you know, you could say begins there. Like, that's where that's where they first have conversations about, like, what it means to be a hero. Um, and I think it even sets up, you know, it's like, I always call it, like, the, the Walmart, my friends are my power speech, but, um, you know, it really sets a course for a three-game arc um, in terms of Sora's perception of, of heroism. But, uh, Hunchback is, like, it's tied? <laughs> well, I'm voting for Coliseum. Um, I can't even believe it, it's close. Like, how on earth? Uh, well, okay, Olympus won at the very end there, but that was nutso. Um, that was bonkers. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea how it got 28 people. I guess just, like, a lot of people like, uh, Hunchback? Um, okay. Next up, we have, uh, Cage 2 Beast Castle versus Cage 1 Deep Jungle. Um... Yeah, I mean, I guess I'll go Beast Castle. Um, I guess I lean towards that. I think uh, Deep Jungle is overhated. Um, I think people are like, oh, I don't know where to go. Well, if you like watch the cutscenes, like if you know, they they say like where you're supposed to go. I think the worst part is probably like finding the gorillas. Um, Beast Castle does have like the Zaldan integration, which I think is one of the very few times Cage Two even bothers to do it. Um, the layout of the castle is not super exciting. Um, I'd rather explore Deep Jungle. It's more interesting to me. But, um, you know, I think Deep Jungle... I think, like, the Vines areas are kind of whatever. I mean, there's they're very generic scenery. Like, Beast Castle, um, it lacks set pieces like um, the treehouse and the, and the camp. But it also doesn't have, like, kind of, like, muddy in-between areas. So, 
Um, Miss Porter, they are voting against my world. Um, Beast Castle wins 78 to 22 percent. Um, Baki, if you don't mind, could you let the poll run just a little bit longer, just so we can uh, get like get a bit more uh, conversation in about it? Just because, and we were almost done with it there, but I just want to uh, kind of let it run, and then you know, once we're we're done talking it through, just because I think the first round is going to be the bulk of the convo. And now you're good. Just wanted to. Uh, Kind of a slow the roll there. We have a BBS rating garden versus the grid. Uh, you know, ironically, after I said let's let's have more discussion, I feel like there's really no discussion to be had here. Um, the grid is potentially my least favorite world in the entire series. Um, a terrible inclusion, something that nobody asked for, nobody wanted. Um, I mean, I know Dream Drop is the place to do it. I'm glad that's where they did it. Ha! But um. Like, the design of it, like, everything. We talked about Deep Jungle blended together. That's nothing compared to the grid. Like, it is just fucking mush. It is, like, black and blue mush. It's just fucking nothing. The character work there is is dreadful. The cutscenes are boring. They drag. None of it really matters. Riku has the one moment on the Solar Sailor where he, like... And he's basically... You could have had it anywhere. Um, I guess he's kind of spurred to think about it because of, like, the ISOs thing that, uh, that the Flins are talking about. But, like, there's just, like, fucking nothing. Um, meanwhile, BBS Radiant Garden, I would consider the high point of that game. It's the midpoint, um, not just for, you know, the gameplay sense, but also for the, the story, the character work. Um, you have amazing cameos, like, it's fan service, but, like, it's all done so well. Um, my favorite scene in the game takes place there on Ven's visit with, uh, Leonisa. Um, a good team-up moment with the, uh, the Wayfinders, which is sorely lacking. I, it's really one of the only moments where they get to work as a unit up until KH3, and even then... Um, it's really kind of understated. I mean, you have the uh, Guardians versus Replicas fight, but it's it's pretty bad. So it's good to get at least some of that. Having to play that three times is probably the worst part of it, but kind of unavoidable with the way that uh, BBS is set up. Um, great world design too, like interesting rooms. You have the, uh, the water spout room that you have to uh, jump around on. Um, the gardens area with the mandrakes, I think that's a neat room. Even just having like a room with like two layers, like just like a bottom and a top floor, like that's enough. Um, so I'm glad that that one uh, crushed the grid at 94 to 6. What's up, Barty? How you doing? Good to see you. All right, sending a rating garden through. Um, KH3 Monstropolis versus uh, World That Never Was in Dream Drop. Um, this is a pretty even match for me, I have to say. I do think um, World That Never Was is probably like my third favorite Dream Drop world. Um, but even then, it's like I don't think it's great. I think it's like good-ish. Um, I think Monstropolis is probably on the lower half of my Disney Worlds in 3, um, but I do love the Vanitas integration with the Unversed. Um, there's no better place to put Vanitas in the game than Monstropolis. Like, that's one of the... Like, just that moment alone is better than, like, most of the Disney integration in Cage 2. And, like, sue me for thinking that should be a core part of the, uh, of the experiment here. Um, I saw a comment, I don't know where it was, but it was like, I think Pat, like, cares about the Disney stuff too much. Uh, sorry, I mean that's like most of the game though. Like, I, I, if I'm if I don't care about it, like there's not a ton to eat there. You know, you have to like make it palatable for me. It's most of the game, um, so I really value stuff like that a lot. Um, I don't know. Like, I guess I wish Monstropolis was just a bit flashier or zanier. Like, the factory is cool. Like, I think the door vault is like an iconic thing that needed to be included, but I feel like they could have done a bit more with it. I feel like the music does not really capture. Um, the energy of the movie, as well as some of the other KH3 tracks do. Um, I don't dislike it, I just feel like it's it's not quite um, right for the environment. Um, and World of Never Was, I mean, you know, it's got some of the more interesting um, geography and visuals in Dream Drop, but, um, you know, it's it's more physically interesting than KH2's, but I think KH2's is more iconic, I'd still put that above it. Um, so, I don't know, I guess I'd probably go Monstropolis, but it's it's close. Um, not for the chat, though. Um, that'll be 38 votes to 27, 58% to 42% for Monstropolis. I mean, you got Yidus Vanitas there. Alright. Moving along. We got, um, Cage 3 Final World versus BBS Mysterious Tower. Um, well, for me, it's, it's Final World. Um, even though it's not like a full world experience, it's not like a full length thing. Um, it's one of those, I, you know, I talk about it in that last video. It's just like such a fucking wham moment. Like, 
I was just like, what the fuck is going on in this game now? Like, you're, you're in the final hour of the game, or so so it seems, because obviously you still have a lot of Graveyard and, uh, and Scala left, but it was just like, like, just such a kid-like moment, you know? Like, I was just back to being, like, a confused and awestruck child. Um, so, BBS Mysterious Tower literally does not need to be playable. It could be, like, a, a Destiny Islands cutscene world like it is in that game. Um, so, really, there's, like, uh, you got two rooms... Um, and it really didn't even need to be, uh, something you could walk around in, so. Um, Final World, you get, like, the Sora collection, the, the, the stars you can talk to. Some of the best, like, unvoiced dialogue in the entire series is from the stars. Doesn't even feel like it's from Kingdom Hearts, to be honest, because it's a little too good, I think. Um, yeah, I wouldn't blame anybody who said Final World is, uh, is their favorite in the series, because it's, like, so mysterious. Um, obviously, like, you know, it, it lacks, um, the general, um, structure that every other world has, but... I just love, like, fucking running around and parkouring and the big, uh, twisty marble thing and getting all the Soras, you know? Um, so, I'm going for the final world, um, as is the chat, 96% to 4%. Two people voted for Mysterious Tower, the KH3 haters among us. Um, there you go. Um, alright. We have KH1 Hollow Bastion versus KH3 Dark World. Let's just move along. I'm just not even a need to talk about it. I'm not even going to entertain it. Like, why even waste time? Um, you know, we have, we have families to get home to. Like, we're not going to... Is salt? Is it really salt? <laughs> How do you know, PJ? Have you licked the Sora Tower in the final world? Did you lick that? Um, yeah, Hollow Bash and Easy. Um, we're, we're doing the poll. All right, you can do the poll if you want. But I, I just feel like, why are we even wasting our time? Um, Woody for pity, what's going on? Thank you so much for the eight months there. We got 32 votes, 33 votes already came in for Hall of Passion. So, uh, thank you so much, Woody, for pity. Um, you spite me, you spite me for the Dark World, whatever. I don't even hate Dark World in KH3, but it's, it's literally just, you know, two fights, right? There are three? Yeah, it's three fights, and uh, one right after the other. You got two Demon Towers, and then Anti Aqua. I guess Anti Aqua again and Remind, so four fights. Um, but. Is 0.2 Dark World on here? Because that is an interesting conversation. That's like a whole game going up against one world. Um, no, democracy is canceled. Um, all right. Uh, next up, we have BBS Deep Space, um, which is seated over um, San Francisco. That's curious, because to me, it's San Francisco, and it's really not even close. Um, Deep Space is not bad. Um, I think it's one of the stronger character worlds in terms of the TVA stuff. Even though they don't interact, um, you can really feel the, the presence of what little pieces of their friendship you can put together in BBS. So, again, you kind of, like, take the crumbs of what you can in that game when it comes to those interactions. Um, I think Gantu is is kind of a fun boss. Um, I don't care for a big jellyfish fucker. I don't like the outdoors um, uh, glider parts. Um, San Francisco, I mean, it kind of suffers from, like, you know, late 2010s um, open world syndrome where it's like, well, everything has an open world, and I think Caribbean is the, uh, the better... Um, instance of that it's kind of weird to, to be honest that there's two worlds like that in kh3 um and caribbean it just uh, is way way better at that sort of genre um but you know i think just the vibe and the aesthetic of san francisco is is more interesting to look at for hours at a time than deep space um i don't really care for like the progression of san francisco i feel like you don't have a lot of time to actually explore without feeling like hero is yelling at you um, which I feel like kind of, I don't like when, when the gameplay feels like, like I'm pushing away from the story in order to experience it. Like I want those two to intertwine and I feel like I'm like being yelled at when I'm trying to explore. Um, but really, um, I think overall I'd rather just spend, um, a couple hours playing through San Francisco than any of the deep space visits. But I will, uh, I will vote for that. <clears throat> That'll be, uh, 71 to 29% for San Fran. Um, it took a movie with themes about what it means to be a family and put it in a game with themes about what it means to be a family and did nothing with it. <laughs> yeah, I thought Barty was here to, uh, <laughs> to stump for, for Deep Space, but pulled the rug out at the very end there. Yeah, this song is, um, this is called Ever After from Dream Drop Distance. Usually plays in, uh, cutesy cutscenes. Um, oh, PJ just uh, DM'd me. Final World is based on the Salt Flats of Bolivia. It's a perfect combination of sea, earth, and sky. Probably, in parentheses. It does look very similar. Um, that's fucking beautiful. That's a real place? Goddamn. Um, thanks, PJ. I had no idea. Look at that. Um, next up, we have Dream Drop Symphony of Sorcery versus Agrabah and Cage 2. 
This will be how uh, Symphony of Sorcery, or how a Dream Drop World... Oh, I guess we had uh, Traverse Town move through, but uh, yeah, I was saying Rom needs to put uh, Symphony of Sorcery or any Dream Drop World against the real, real schlub of a world. And I think Agraba KH2 is like, probably the definition of like, C world in, uh, in Kingdom Hearts. Like, it's not good, it's not bad, it's just there. Um, so, and I think Symphony of Sorcery is one of the most creative worlds in the series. Um, I don't think that's like a hot take. I think, you know, making it so all of the music is, is classic, um, you know, orchestra stuff. Um, how your your Keyblade hits are even um, musicified, I think is really cool. The environments are neat because they're really made from nothing. Like it really is a Cage original world, um, but not really, uh, you know, spending time on really any uh, plot stuff. I mean, and, and sometimes that's fine. I think it's it's nice to just have like, all right, we're not gonna like get a cutscene every every two rooms. We're just gonna like have a stretch of gameplay. I think it's uh it's kind of refreshing at points. So um, again, I don't think Cage Two Agrabah is bad. Um, I think it's, you know, it's a friendly follow-up on the KH1 Agrabah experience, but it's, it's really, uh, nothing right home about, so. Um, Ali hates Agrabah. Hates it. Um, so that'll be, uh, SOS, 93% over Agrabah's 7%. We will, oh, I forgot to, uh, do snare frame. There you go. Next up, we have Caribbean in KH3 versus Atlantica in KH1. Uh, two worlds where you can swim. Um, surprised Atlantica was able to get seated as high as 13. Um, I don't think it's as bad as everyone says it is, um, but it is still, you know, the worst traditional gameplay world in KH1. I'd only have 100 Acre Wood beneath it. And even, even that I don't think is bad. I say it in that KH1 world ranking, like, I don't think any of these worlds are bad. Um, I just think Atlantica suffers from, you know, it, it's sort of, um, like, uh, the controls are... They're not great. Like that, that's the problem. I would say. Like they're, they're kind of um, adolescent era of of 3D games still, where you're, you're still coming into your own and like moving about that sort of um, like you have you know multiple axes you're moving around in, um, in underwater space. It's just kind of awkward. Um, I do like how it really encourages the use of magic. Um, that's probably the high point. How you're like you know you just got spellbinder probably if you've been playing the game conventionally. Um, the Ursula fight, you have to like use magic on the cauldron, your fire will tear through the sea neons. Um, that's all well and good. Um, but I think like the, it's sort of the same thing with, um, Deep Jungle, where it's got like these muddy areas that like, they all blend together. Um, there's not many iconic set pieces besides like, you know, the grotto and the, the sunken ship, I guess. Um, and even that is kind of, you know, tangential. Um, like I don't even know, like how much time do they spend in the sunken ship in the movie? And like, does it even look like it does in the movie? I don't know. I haven't seen Little Mermaid in a long time. Caribbean, I think might be my chalk pick for top. I was going to say favorite, but maybe like top three. I have to think about where some of the original worlds stack up against it in KH3. Um, but I think it does the open world thing better than San Fran. Um, I think the ship thing is fun. I like how the game forces you to explore. I know people hate the crabs. I love the crabs moment. Um, I think it's one of the best moments in the series in terms of like making the player explore. Like here's a goal, but also like you don't have to go to specific A, B, or C. Like just explore, look around, and find things. Like I think it's like actually one of the best moments. Um, you see, which was fewer, fewer crabs. I mean, maybe what, 100 crabs then? I don't know. Dance, water, dance. 90% uh, to 10% for Caribbean. Um, I think I'm gonna take a quick break actually. Like how much further through the round of 64? Yeah, I, I gotta get a refill on my drink. My uh, mouth's getting dry. I'm talking a lot here. Um, Ruthie, what's going on? A wonderful dream come a true. Wonderful dream come true. Uh, thank you so much. 22 months, that's enough time for a baby elephant to be born. Isn't that crazy? Anyways, I'm very glad to be here and happy to have spent so much time with you and everyone here as a part of my life. It has indeed been a wonderful dream come true. <laughs> thank you so much, Ruthie. I didn't even see that you uh, said that before I said it. Um, thank you so much, Ruthie. Uh, I really appreciate that. So we're going to take a quick break and we will be back with the round of 64 with, uh, don't run the poll yet, but Neverland Cage 1 versus uh, Land of Dragons Cage 2. Easy money for me. Don't have to think about that while I'm getting a refill, but maybe you do. So think about that as we take a brief break here. Be right back.
And we're back. Thank you for your patience. Let me get the Yule Log running again. All right. Um, I'm gonna have to find another uh, thing to play. Anyone has any suggestions in about uh, in about 15-ish minutes, we're gonna have to uh, find another music thing to play. Um, all right, so we're back. We can uh, now run the poll for Neverland in KH1 versus Land of Dragons in KH2. Uh, for me, that's an easy Neverland. I think Land of Dragons is one of the more abysmal KH2 worlds, and probably in the series. I mean, if you really stack it up against even some BBS stuff, um, especially like I don't know, like even Dream Drop stuff, I feel like like I feel like I might even take like like uh, City of the Bells Hunchback over Land of Dragons. I might even take. I, think I definitely would take Prancher's Paradise over it. Um, it's so dull, it's just so boring, the layout. Um, it's just like, I mean, I guess it has like Storm Rider, that's cool. I like the the uh, music, I mean, but again, the music, like you're never really gonna dislike the music. Actually, I didn't even say during the grid, probably two of the worst tracks as well. Um, maybe Digital Domination is like okay, but like Access the Grid, it's just like a series of forces into a tube, it's terrible. Um, can you tell me honestly that the pirate ship is Neverland? I cannot, you never land in Neverland in KH1. But in terms of, again, the Sora and Riku drama, it's kind of a sequel to Monstro. Um, a great battle with Captain Hook. Great fucking battle theme. I guess you could say the music is a little weaker. I don't like Captain Hook's pirate ship that much in terms of the music track. Um, <coughs> Anti-Sora is a good battle. Kind of close quarters, um, spooky sort of ordeal. Um, so, I'm going Neverland. Um, it's crazy, because I think Mulan just deserved uh, so much better, but... <coughs> it really is, Ruthie. It really is just an excuse. Um, the Phantom, yeah, Phantom is a cool boss fight. The Clock Tower, a great area. That Just, like, being able to fly. You can fucking fly in Neverland, you know? We'll see how far Neverland makes it into the bracket as a whole, but uh, I think that's that's easy over Land of Dragons. <clears throat> All right. We will send Neverland through. 81 over 19. We have Cage 2, Timeless River versus um, Mirage Arena and BBS. Um... Yeah, as someone who, you know, is a uh, Cage 2 um, critic and a BBS sympathizer, I'll still go Timeless River there. Um, I've kind of been on the record that I think Mirage Arena is a bit of a waste of potential. Um, not a waste of effort. I think they put a lot of effort into making it. I just think it had <laughs> had more potential and that uh, they didn't quite go all in on it. A place called the Mirage Arena, I feel like, really opens up so many avenues. For what you could do with it in a game with disney and square crossover potential and it just kind of like really doesn't do that like it does monstro you know it does it has like the uh the armored um opponents right it has uh, the armor varicus um but and what's the uh, the no heart armor but you know they they had plans for like laguna to be the host of it but then they and like i, I kind of like the environment like i like the the dearly dreams uh music track there um, like, I like the aesthetic of it. Environments is probably a bit too, uh, generous. Like, it's really just those two areas. But, like, I like the vibe of it, you know? Um, I just wish they could have gone a bit more... Wish they could have fleshed it out more, you know? I wish they could have put more into it. Like, I don't really want to fight just on verse mobs. Like, even KH1 and KH2 Coliseum Cups had more. Um, you know, they had Sephiroth and the Ice Titan. They had Hades, Leon, uh, Cloud, and Yuffie. Um, Tifa in 2. <coughs> Pete shows up again in 2. Like, even that, I feel like, uh... Just really already rockets the two Coliseums out of the Mirage Arena. Timeless River, the most charming world in KH2. Um, I think most of the charm budget, as I said, goes into Timeless River for that game. World design is, you know, nothing crazy, but um, it being black and white, the sound changing. Um, it's just, uh, and they, you know, they play with the time travel thing a bit. Like, I think it's it's really cool. Um, so that's, that's pretty easy, as it is for all of you. Timeless River, 92% to the 8% for Mirage Arena. <coughs> all right. We have um, Agrabah KH1 versus Dwarf Woodlands BBS. Um, yeah, these sure are 7 and 10 seeds. That's probably where they belong. Um, hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's probably Agrabah. Um, I don't dislike or like either of these, really. Like, these are both very middling to me. I don't know if anyone's super passionate about either. Um, I think, you know, KH1 Agrabah has some neat platforming moments um i like the cave a lot actually i would say the cave is is better than the city proper in agraba um dwarf woodlands um it has some of the better post kh1 world design i would say with areas like uh like the vault and the uh, the castle gates area 
Um, even that with just like the chest that you can, you know, use air slide cheese, like that's interesting at least. Um, yeah, they're both good, but neither are great. And they're, neither are bad, they're just kind of, you know, they're, they're C plus, B minus. Um, I, I would always take Cage 1 Agrabo over Cage 2. Um, boss fights are kind of meh, I will say, in, in Cage 1 Agrabo. Pot Centipede not doing a ton for me. The cave is whatever. Um, and then, you know, Jafar 1 is easy, and Genie Jafar is laughable. Although I did, yes, die to it once on stream. Um, I do probably prefer the Dwarf Wilden's music over the Agrabah music. Um, I do find that field theme for Dwarf Wilden's very mystical and, uh, and whimsical. Um, let's go down, guides. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll go, uh, I'll go Agrabah. But it's, it's not, you know... It's not passionate. It's not a passionate vote. Although it is tied right now. So if anybody lurking wants to break this tie, if you do feel passionate, Presto clearly doesn't, about either Dwarf Wildens or <laughs> KH1 Agrabah, you can vote now because we are 50-50. <coughs> Agrabah does have Arabian Waka for one brief moment. That's true. Um, it has the uh, the recolors of the uh, Traverse Town people. Um, we are tied again. <laughs> Two people voted. Uh, we're once again tied. Pet the presto. Um, Agrabah does have Kurzisa, a great, I will say, probably one of the best uh, secret bosses in the series, I think. At least in terms of, like, maybe you can't throw in Lingering Will and Yazora, but in terms of, like, Heartless or, like, Disney bosses. Um, all right, look at that. Agrabah pulled ahead at the very end, 51 to 49. Um, I'm fine with that. Um, all right. Scala at Kylum. And Cage 3 versus Cage 2 Atlantica. Uh, I'm, I'm tempted to also just forego discussion here, but I will I will let that go to a poll. Um, I love Scala. I just talked about this with Final World, but it's one of those moments in Cage 3 where I feel like a kid again. Like, I don't know what I'm looking at, especially as someone who didn't really watch any trailers with the, the Cable Town. Um, I was just, like, blown away. I thought it was Kingdom Hearts. You know how we call it? Like, it's called Kingdom Hearts. Why is it a kingdom? Like, that sounds like it's a place, you know? So I thought when I first saw it, and maybe I, you could even say I was a little underwhelmed when I found out that it wasn't. I don't really like that, because I feel like Skalad Kylum is so much grander and more mysterious in concept and in name and in appearance than Daybreak Town. But to know that Daybreak Town came before it, kind of, uh, I, don't, I don't know if it, it, uh, it sullies the whole thing, but it, it's kind of like, takes the mystique off a little bit, it takes the sheen off. Like, I wish Skalad Kylum was like the most ancient place. Um, and, and then it would turn into Daybreak Town. I wish it was the other way around. It just makes way much more sense to me. Um, but Atlantic and Cage 2, you know. I, I've said I understand why it's there. I, I get it. Um, the music is such a huge part of the uh, Disney Renaissance at Atlantica or, or Little Mermaid is the first world to jumpstart that trend. Um, but it's just not done very well. I think if they did it in Cage 3, it could have had a lot more potential. There's just no reason to really have a world like this again, I don't think, after Melmem. We kind of get our fix for the uh, the rhythm game stuff. It's just, um, it, I'm even softening on it over the years. Like, um, I think as a kid, you're just like, oh, this is embarrassing. Like, I just want to hit stuff. And you still feel that a little bit, I think. But, um, like, I get it. Like, I'm more, I understand it more now. But I still don't like it. Um, so, we'll go Scala. Um, especially in Remind, I would still put, like, base game Scala over Atlantica. Um, but, you know, Remind Scala, throwing that in as well. Um, that was a really amazing piece of exploration that KH3 gave you, which really harkened back to uh, KH1 with some of the things that it asked you to do. Um, all right, we have KH1 Destiny Islands uh, versus KH3 100 Acre Wood. Um, again, almost doesn't warrant discussion. 100 Acre Wood and KH3 is one of those, like, moments where you think that they have, like, a checklist of things that were in the first two games, and they were like, well, I guess we need to have it in here. Um... I have seen like written arguments to like kind of um argue for uh, 100 acre woods brevity in kh3 um to kind of like make this this claim that well sora is it's supposed to represent what the reason <laughs> it's so short and so confined is that the that sora is growing up right he's moving on he doesn't have enough time he used to have time to spend like you know fucking hours in 100 acre wood but now it's like a sideshow it always was a sideshow, but in Cage 3, it's like, you know, you literally, you don't even have to uh, um, interact with the book at all in that game. Like, at least in 1, you have to um, deliver the book, and in 2, you have to, like, go in and, uh, you know, have the uh, the book stolen by the soldiers. But in 3, like, you never have to go talk to Merlin. Like, it's completely optional. Such a sideshow. Um, meanwhile, Destiny Islands Cage 1, 
um, such a beautiful, nostalgic start to a series. Um, it really manages to feel like home for that short amount of time you're, that you're there. Um, does it better than Land of uh, Departure, at least. Um, it's just, like, so cozy and familiar. Like, obviously, it will be. that Like, there's the nostalgia is talking there. Um, but really cool platforming stuff with both sides of the island, especially the race. I don't mind the race. I know some people hate it. Um, the provisions gathering, like, it's, it's a tutorial, obviously. But um, I still think it's, like, some pretty fun exploration stuff in the in the first game so it is definitely skippable in three i have done a file in three where i have never even seen the merlin cutscene. so i know we talked out this really obvious choice but i you know that's the whole point of the exercise is to talk about these things so um cage 2 atlantica or ice cream b in disney town bbs um i might actually take cage 2 atlantica at least that's like integrated into the story and like the songs are a little more um fun to uh hear like I mean, some of them are funny in, like, a bad way. Um, but, yeah, I think I'll probably go Cage 2 Atlantica. I think the rhythm on Ice Cream Beat is probably better, but I think uh, I'm maybe more entertained by doing Atlantica. <coughs> Alright, we have um, Cage 2 Halloween Town versus um, the BBS Graveyard. Yeah, two places where souls are laid to rest. Um, God, I don't like this at all. <laughs> I don't, uh... Like, I still had Cage 2 Halloween Town on the uh, higher end of the Cage 2 world just for the, like, I love Christmas, you know? It's crazy that they got through that whole world in Cage 1 they didn't even use half of the source material, you know? Um, but it is it is the worst level design in a game, and it's in a main title, too. It's so bad. Um, the experiment is really good, though. Um, I love Oogie Boogie. I love his fight as well. I think it, you know... I'm, I'm higher on the Oogie Boogie fight than probably anybody else in the uh, in the community, but I would say that it's uh, it's a fun shakeup that you're not in a flat arena where the boss is uh, able to just be bodied by you constantly. Um, so I think that's fun. Um, again, the Christmas environments are really are really cool, but like the Halloween part of it is just like it might as well just have been called Christmas Town in this game and just like flesh out Christmas Town more because the Halloween shit is just so often uh, pushed off to the side. The graveyard in BBS is literally just like the tornado room. Um, I really can't in good conscience vote for it. Like, it's, you know, it's got really um, impactful scenes and boss fights at the end. Um, but as a world experience, like, it's... And even those scenes, I don't know. Like, I feel like even the blow of them is, is softened by the fact that you saw, like, the big one in the KH2 secret ending. And it looked better in that game. Um, <clears throat> but, you know... There's cool stuff with Bragg and Vanitas and Xehanort, um, but uh, I don't know. It's it's bleak and drab, and I get that that's the point. Um, but it's really only got like that tornado room. That's like the only interesting thing going on in terms of the actual level. So I will go Halloween Town. It's it's not a great feeling. Eight and nine is probably the, uh, a a good seed for where uh, Ron put those. Um, all right, we have Cage Three Toy Box versus um, BBS Olympus. Um, I'm not, like, crazy on Toy Box. I think it kind of falls off after that Andy's room. Um, I think Angelic Amber is, you know, as we talked about, a pretty pretty cool fight. I do think it's, uh, more fun than the King of Toys. I do like the King of Toys environment. Um, but Galaxy Toys itself never really grabbed me. Um, I don't like how that world progresses. Um, I feel like it's kind of just confusing in terms of, like, all right, we're going here. Oh, but now we're gonna go home. Oh, but wait, one of the toys is up here, so you gotta go back and get him. Okay, now we're going home. But wait, no, now Buzz is gone. Like, it's just kind of like, I, don't, I feel like they were kind of spinning their wheels with how the world progressed. Um, but it's still going to go over Olympus, which is, you know, the same uh, three rooms as usual without any fun tournaments this time. Um, it has a town near Thebes, so four four rooms now. Um, but even that is just like another, you know, room to fight mobs in with no exploration. Um, you got Zack. That's probably the best, the, the highlight of the world. Um, really not even a ton of interesting uh, TVA stuff. Um, it really is just kind of like a, an aftershock of Radiant Garden, but not in a, in a fun way, like Deep Spaces. Um, I guess you got like Terra, you know, uh, interacting with Hades. That's kind of fun and interesting, but um, it's going to be Toy Box. Uh, even just for seeing the iconic characters for the first time of Toy Box and uh, the You've Got a Friend in Me feel theme. I, I love that. I love Toy Box Jam. Um, so music there is on point. Again, what as usual. What is this question? Um, can you explain the pig is in jail? <laughs> so, uh, pig is a derogatory term for law enforcement. Uh, I'm not sure if that's like a US-centric uh, thing. Um, but, 
that was the other uh, joke there. That uh, Ham was put in jail. He says he was pig penned by uh, by Amber. So I said that was a neat role reversal. Um, Void Stream forty four. Thank you for the follow there. I uh, appreciate that. See, I'll vote uh, Toy Box. <clears throat> You've never heard people call the cops the pigs? You can do a poll on that. Uh, Trio the Punch. Thank you for the follow. That's a familiar name. I don't know if that's from Twitter or YouTube comments. That sounds familiar. I could be wrong. Maybe Discord, but... Um, see you, Milano. Uh, drive safe. Or, you know, subway safe or walk safe. I don't know what your commute looks like. Um, but, you know, be safe. Uh, yeah, they... I mean, if you've ever played, like, Grand Theft Auto, you'll hear it for sure. Or just, like, watch any, uh, any media that involves, uh, law enforcement. Um, here, here we go. Cops is pigs. Heard it? Never heard it. You can vote now. <laughs> we'll do a quick... <laughs> A quick uh, stopping down here. Yeah, it looks like most people have. So, not not to uh, dunk on. It might be an American thing. Um, I know Barnabas is not of the states, so it's the pigs. <laughs> this is important. Does that mean Woody is a pig? I guess he he's not not. Um, you got two pigs in your party, and uh, five people are lying. <laughs> no, I, I get it. Like if you're not from the states, I could see you not knowing it. But even then, like. Uh, you might have to avoid a, a decent amount of media where, where that term is used. <coughs> I, I was raised saying, I smell bacon every time my family drove past the cop. There you go. Yeah. Um, Floridians uh, tend to like their law enforcement. Interesting. I mean, it's Florida, so, you know. <laughs> There's something in the water down there anyway. <laughs> Alright, looks like we got 84 to 16% in favor of knowing that the cops are pigs. So, probably the most important poll we've run on the regular Pat Twitch channel. Alright, Toy Box moves along. We got Space Paranoids in Cage 2 versus Disney Town in BBS. Um, I do believe there was a comment on my YouTube post today that said, please do not let Disney Town move past the round of 64. And, um, you know, I was willing to entertain the notion. Um, but against Space Paranoids, which maybe if you ask me... Five, six years ago, I would have put Disney Town ahead just for the aesthetics. I hated the Space Paranoids aesthetic. Um, but after I'm um, thinking about it a bit, my mind does change on these things. I feel like my mind has changed on, on certain Kingdom Hearts um, topics since starting YouTube. But this was, you know, I had, I had come to this, um, this coming to Tron moment. This coming to Jesus, coming to Tron moment um, where I, I realized Space Paranoids is pretty good. Like, it's one of the best moments of KH2. Also, we need a, a new uh, soundtrack. You know what? I'm feeling FF10. Um, I know it's not Kingdom Hearts, but I love Final Fantasy X. Um, and we're going to play it. Um, let me just find a good OST of it. <coughs> While you guys uh, vote on that. Let's see. This one looks pretty good. Um, actually, I lied. It only goes up to 49 tracks, and it just stops at uh, Mount Gagazette. So... Not that we'll get through all of it, but I figure most of it. Well, these titles are all in Japanese, except for Otherworld. Let's just start here and see what we get, huh? What's this? Is it going to be Christmassy, though? It's not. Um, let me know if that's too loud. Um, actually, <laughs> let me skip this song. I'm like, we're so in the mood with the Yule Log, and now it's like... Hey, that's, that's a little sub song. This is a, this is your story. <clears throat> um, all right. Hold on. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm a space, space paranoid a sympathizer now. Um, I don't think... I still am not huge on the aesthetics. I think the layout of the world is whatever. Um, but, you know, intertwining the Cage and the Disney stuff is is uh, few and far between where that happens in Cage 2. And I think uh, Space Paranoids is possibly the best example of it in the series. I mean, it's really up there with, like, you know, Monstro and Neverland, I think, are two great examples from Cage 1. But I think Cage 2... Space Paranoids is a bit more explicit about it. So, 78 to 22 percent in favor of Space Paranoids. Um, <clears throat> BBS Castle of Dreams versus Cage Two Port Royal. God, this is like another nothing to me. Um, <clears throat> I really, well, I guess I probably go just for Ven's visit in Castle of Dreams. Um, and Aquas is really fun. Like Ven's in terms of the actual exploring and playing it, and Aquas for the scenes and the moments. Um, Terrors is whatever, you have like the escort mission, which are pretty, pretty often actively bad. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Ruthie's here, so I, I know what to do. You're right. A wonderful dream country. Um, you got Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo, a little grating, um, after so many playthroughs. Um, Port Royal is, 
not great. Um, it's really gross. Yeah, I know they're trying to go like the realism angle, um, but obviously the technology was, you know, not quite there. Um, they managed to do the Caribbean and make it kind of bright and vibrant, you know? It starts off in like this fucking pitch white, the Davy Jones locker place. Um, and then even after that, it's like, you know, you're not stuck with these muddy grays and browns and dark blues. Um, it really is just like a, you know, beautiful tropical environment. Um, I guess Port Royal is just set at night and, and Caribbean is set in the day. Maybe it just comes down to that. But um, the town environments in Caribbean are so much better. Like, obviously, you have NPCs. Port Royal is, you know, empty and desolate and just in gross. And, you know, Castle Dreams, you have like that vent portion with uh, being shrunk down and, and being uh, going through the uh, the mouse holes and all that. Um and Aqua has iconic scenes with, uh, you know, going to kill Lady Tremaine and slapping Cinderella's ass. Cake. Cake. Fruit. Cake. Perfect time for the song to end. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she commits a triple homicide. So, um, yeah, I'll go Castle of Dreams. I had to think about it for a bit. Um, but we'll go with that. What track is this? This is Bodge Temple. Not very Christmassy. Let's see. That's the main battle theme. Um... Let's get to like Besaid. That's the game over theme. But it's got jingle bells in this one. It's a sad song. It's uh, Titus going, I need food. But I could uh, I get behind the Bodge Temple. <clears throat> this is the interior. All right, Castle of Dreams. Keishu Hall of Bastion versus KH100 Acre Wood. Um, yeah, that'll be Hall of Bastion for me. Another easy W, yeah. <clears throat> um, he got simply put on Christmas music. Um, I, I would be afraid of getting snagged on the, uh, on the instrumentals, even if they are supposedly generic. After the conversation we had about the, uh, Soviet Union National Anthem being, uh, copyright held, I will, uh, probably not, uh, risk it for the Christmas biscuit, but... Yeah, Hollow Bastion Cage 2 is really good. Um, it is, like, my third favorite of the, uh, Cage 2 original worlds, but it's still, you know, it's miles ahead of everything else in that game in terms of the, uh, the Disney stuff. Um, you know... The, still the most iconic middle point in the series, like, I'll give it that. The Thousand Heartless, still um, pretty unmatched in terms of, like, the mid-game uh, momentum there. Um, it is a badass name, yeah. It's way cooler than Rainy Garden. Um, I mean, they, they are, they feel like, uh, you know, two sides of the same coin, the light and the dark. Hollow Bastion is very, like, dark and mysterious and, and brooding um, and empty, and then Rainy Garden is, like, bustling and light and bright. So, any plans for another Among Us stream? Uh, if anything, it would probably be a Goose Goose Duck stream if my patrons were into it. Um, but I haven't done a, a patron game night that I've streamed in a long time. We just had one uh, last night. Um, they're a lot more um, bumping nowadays. I streamed them because uh, it was kind of like more doable. Um, I might kill Vodka on stream, that's true. Well, we could do Animal Crossing. Yeah, I actually love that. Um, I've never played Animal Crossing music on stream, so that'd be fun. <clears throat> um, Animal Crossing Christmas music? Um, maybe we can get like a relaxing winter and holiday music. Oh, nice. That's like an hour. Okay. By Drift Tunes on YouTube. There you go. <coughs> oh, it's like a shiny Drift Loon is their, uh, their icon. That's cute. Um, do I plan on uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet? Not right now. Um, maybe over the holidays I'll check it out, but I still have to... I have so many games I have to play. Um, I didn't even talk about these two worlds that much. You, uh, you know, it's, it's obvious. I don't really have to spell that one out for you. Um, Cage Three Olympus versus um, Dream Drop Prankster's Paradise. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go Olympus. Um, that's where I'm leaning. I do think uh, Prankster's Paradise is one of the better Dream Drop worlds. Um, quite the tunes. Sorry. Oh yeah, that's the vlog. Go. Thank you. Um, yeah, Cage 3 Olympus, like, I know we have Olympus Fatigue, this is, like, what, the fucking eighth or ninth time we've seen this, but, um, I think it's probably the most well done out of all the, uh, all the games. It, it lacks, like, some of the, um, like, obviously it doesn't have the, the tournaments, it doesn't have, like, the, the Final Fantasy Synergy, which were two things, um, that were always a part of, uh, the other mainline Olympuses, um, even BBS side Final Fantasy stuff, um, you know, I'm on the record as saying, like, you know, Final Fantasy and Cage 3 was not, like, a really sore spot for me. Uh, but I do think it, it's a little it's a little sad to see it not there. Um, but I love, you know, the uh, Greece environment, Thebes um, in Cage 3. I love um, Mount Olympus. I love the Realm of the Gods. Like, it's all great. Like, it's just great environments. Um, Prankster's Paradise, I do think the, uh, 
Amusement Park is cool. I think Flow Motion does not break that room like it does in so many other Dream Drop rooms, so it should be praised for that. Um, I like just the environment of like a fun fair or a, a circus or whatever. Um, I think that's neat. Um, the water stuff is is kind of muddy, and Monstro and Riku's side is a, a worse version of it uh, than it was in KH1. Um, but I do think it's still probably top half of Dream Drop Worlds out of, what, seven worlds, so maybe that's not saying a lot, but... Uh, Dreffin, thank you for the follow there. Um, looks like we're all mostly in agreement. 82 over 18 for Olympus. Yeah, I want two Sephiroths in Cage 4. I want the two Winged Angel. Alright, we got... Oh, last, uh, last round in the, uh, in the first, uh, last matchup in the first round. Um, Cage 2 World Never Was versus the Realm of Darkness in BBS. Well, yeah, when you, when you're, uh, when you got those two going against each other, it'll be... Because I think Realm of Darkness could have gone up against some other Cage 2 Worlds. Like, you put Realm of Darkness against, uh, Land of Dragons, I'd probably go Realm of Darkness. Or even, like, Port Royal, or, um, Atlantica, Bridelands, Agarbay even. Um, there... Is there a second side? Um, there's not. Yeah, it's, it's only, uh, 64. Um, so yeah, it'll be World of Never Was, um, I think probably between End of the World and, like, the Graveyard, um, you would probably still call that the best, like, finale portion in terms of the rest of the world. Um, they're both End of the World, the Graveyard, and World of Never Was, they're all, like, kind of straight shots. Um, I mean, Graveyard, you're, like, diverting and doing one thing or the other, um, first or second, but, um, you know. I don't mind that with when it's the final world because it's like, all right, we're here. We know what the goal is. We don't have to like go talk to the locals to figure out what's going on. We know that X Y Z bad guy is at the top of this or at the bottom of this or over there, and we're just gonna plow through everything to get to them. So, even though World of Ever Was is very linear, um, I think it works for that kind of um, gameplay reason. Um, the Realm of Darkness in BBS, like if honestly, if you this was like 0.2 Realm of Darkness then I might put it above uh, World of Never Was in terms of a world. I mean, it lacks the moments. Maybe I'm saying that just to be cheeky because like World of Never Was has like so many killer boss fights. Um, the aesthetics, the like design of like the castle um, and even the dark city is, is super cool to run around in even though it is like, again, like a flat area. This will be on the second channel on YouTube, yeah. I probably could uh, excuse this one being up on the first channel though, to be honest, on the main channel. We've got the Xemnas truck, yeah. Um, <clears throat> oh, sorry. Yeah, it's... <laughs> no, you gotta, you gotta say the 2 and D. If you type out uh, the word second, it won't work. Um, but I appreciate the initiative, Vodka. Um, my truck ruined. Um, but yeah, it'll be, uh, World of Never Was. Um, 98% over 2. One person said Realm of Darkness. Alright. That'll be our first round down. Now we're in the round of 32. Let's go back up to the top here. Kicking it off with, oh wow, uh, Traverse Town KH1 versus KH3 Twilight Town. Um, if it was KH2 Twilight Town, I feel like there'd be more of a discussion in terms of going up against what I think is a titan of KH world design in Traverse Town. Um, God, there's just like, really like KH2 Twilight Town and KH1 Traverse Town, like feel like towns. Like they feel like fucking interconnected spaces with like, it's not just like, all right, you got this one area that leads to another area that leads to the next and then maybe it goes in a circle. Like, Traverse Town, it does have that, like, main three-district circle, but it has, like, all these different paths, you know? It has, like, the alleyway that goes into the second district. It has the balcony that goes into the third. It's all, like, fucking interwoven. You have the, um, the Sorcerer's House, or, or Merlin's, uh, the, uh, what's it called? Is it called the Sorcerer's? What is it called? Magician's Lab. The Magician's Study. Um, yeah, the alleyway. Um, you have, like, the, uh, the secret, uh, passage that takes you back into the waterway, and that goes back into the first district, or into the, into the second, and then there's the, the alleyway that goes into there, or back into the first. Like, it's just so fucking interconnected. Um, Cage Street Twilight Town, very beautiful, as we discussed, um, but it's, um, it's pretty, you know, pretty, uh, underwhelming. Uh, if you had the whole Cage 2 Twilight Town given the Cage 3 treatment, then we might be talking, but unfortunately, did not quite get that amount of love, so. And the puppies, yeah, the puppies house. So good. A great side quest. Um, still unmatched, I think. Like, maybe Lucky Emblems in terms of, like, the, uh, you know, it, it requires more environmental um, awareness. Whereas uh, the puppies, you just need the chess. But I feel like even the puppies are, like, they're written into the into the game better. Like, they they at least attempted to do that with the Lucky Emblems. Like, with um, Olette, like, giving the whole lowdown on, like, wow, these symbols, they're, like, the new hotness. But, like, why? Like, what does that mean? Like, you haven't heard about the Lucky Emblems? They're everywhere. Everyone's so into them. But, like, why? What do they mean? Like, who put them there? 
Um, like, I don't know why the puppies are in chests. That might just be, like, a gameplay story segregation thing. Um, you could argue that, like, uh, Ansem <laughs> put them in chests. Like, he found them and was like, get, get in this box, you dumb dogs. And then he hid them. Or Maleficent. Um, but... Like, I'm sure if KH1 had the technology to have, like, puppies running around in the world, they could have maybe done that, but... Um, it's, like, another way that KH1, like, integrates, like, the overall general apocalypse of the game um, into even its side quests, where it's like, okay, we have, like, these misplaced characters, please help them find their way back home. Like, it's just so cool. Um, who is heartless enough? I guess, I guess it would be Ansem. He is heartless. Um, alright, so that's Traverse Town, 89 to 11. We have KH1 Halloween Town versus BBS Enchanted Dominion. Um, as much as I do enjoy Enchanted Dominion and BBS, I think Halloween Town and KH1, even though it's seated lower, um, I know it does. It has its detractors. People don't like the manor. I love the manor. I love both the uh, climb up it. I mean, I don't love the manor fight, but I love the climb. Um, I like the fight. I love Oogie Boogie's um, standard fight with the roulette wheel. That's just so cool. It's so pulled from the movie. So many references. The aesthetic is just fucking on point. Um, you got the costumes. I mean, Enchanted Dominion is, like, pretty middling when stacked up against the very first uh, Halloween Town. Um, what if uh, Lucky Emblems are, like, X and Mickey has his eyes on us? Oh, like the, uh, the, the Re Recusant uh, Sigil? Um, the Recusant? I always forget how to say it. Is it Recusant? No, Recusant. Recusant? I, I always forget. Someone has to tell me. I'm, that's one of those things where I read it uh, more than I hear it, and I don't know. Um, well, thanks, Vaka. Uh, recusant. Uh, <laughs> I can't see. Oh, sorry, you had to dash there. <laughs> recusant. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I should get that. I should get Zemna saying uh, recusant as a clip. Yeah. No, thank you. I missed the second dash there, Vaka. Um, I was being sarcastic when I said thank you, but legitimately thank you, no. Um, so five versus four. Yeah, Halloween Town. Um... Whoa, Galvanus the Great, thank you so much for the uh, 1,800 bits. I uh, really appreciate that. Wow, thank you. Very generous. Um, yeah, again, Enchanted Dominion is, uh, you know, my, my second favorite Disney World in BBS, but it's, um, you know, there's not a ton to talk about there. All right, we got... God, I love this, this song here. Very good. Um, <clears throat> the Origin of Vodka Sound Drop. It comes from... I mean, I know it from the Vine, this one. Two shots. Might be a little quiet, but, um, I might be, uh, I don't know where it's actually from, though. Like, it's a vine, but I don't know what the vine is of. Um, <clears throat> Zemnus is in Hunter x Hunter. Is that how you, I always hear about that, but I don't know what it is, um, or anything about it, or even if I said that right. Um, this is so tough. Uh, Kingdom of Corona versus End of the World. I'm going End of the World. Um, I do quite like Kingdom of Corona in KH3. Um, it's kind of redundant, I don't need to say that, but it's only in KH3. Um, but End of the World is just, like, so spooky. Um, like, I like the vibe of Corona, like, I love the kingdom more than the forest stuff, I like the marsh area, um, it is pretty linear, but I, I kind of just like how it's laid out as, like, a journey, like, it's a little bit of, like, a pilgrimage moment, and I, I feel like it, it lasts long enough that I don't mind that it's linear, um, whereas, like, KH2 is like, alright, we're going from Halloween Town to Christmas Town, but it's, like, two hallways, you know, um, but End of the World is just, like, it's nuts, it's just fucking crazy. Um, there's plenty of forest environments in Kingdom Hearts, and, you know, Corona might be the best of the forest environments, um, but End of the World is still, there's really nothing quite like that. Um, but it's tied right now. It's tied, so. End of the World is pulling ahead. <laughs> this is Zemnis, okay. Alright, I am appraising the world of chaos. I'm looking for some new real estate after my castle got blown up, so I have come to the end of the world to do a bit of scouting. So let's take a look at this. Hmm, it looks quite penis-like, I must say. Um, what is that, a face on the on the tip, would you call that? And then there's a naked man strapped to the top of it. What are these little tentacles here? That seems difficult to clean. I would say probably won't be my next resting place. I'll give it a 3 out of 10. A soft 3 and a hard 2. That's what I'll end on that. <laughs> there you go. We have ended the world in the lead. Oh, it's tied again. It's 50-50. 29 votes and 29 votes. So, <laughs> Patricia and my good lady ears. <laughs> um, we might have to do a runoff, folks. It is tied again. Um, run the poll again, Vodka, because 
we uh gotta come to an agreement here. The end of the world, you got Chernabog, you got the World Terminus, which is like a fucking trippy moment. You have the Hollow Bastion machine, which drops the very first Kingdom Hearts in-game on you. Um, that's nuts. Um, because all the way up until that point, I've, I've said that many times in several videos, but, uh, I was like, I thought it was just, like, two cool words put together. It's actually a thing? Maybe even a place? Who knows? Um, End of the World is purple. That's true. Um, and once again, voting for End of the World in the runoff. Also, I got buttered Skinny Pop. I went to the store today. Regular GF got me on the Skinny Pop. Um... But I've been eating the non-buttered one, which was still, you would think it'd be shitty, but it was actually really good. So I haven't tried the buttered one yet. So let's just, let's just try that on straight. It's a big bag. Got a sneef. Smells good. Um, I did not finish the Werther's. I, I do eat them quite occasionally, though. Yeah, so there's basically no reason to go back to the unbuttered Skitty Pop. <laughs> I mean, I can tolerate it, but why would you when you can have this? Um, there you go. End of the world. Moves along in the runoff. Um, 55 to 45. It was still kind of close. Ha! Um, we got um, BBS Neverland versus Graveyard in Cage 3. Oh, boy. Um, that's interesting. Obviously, as a world to run around in and explore, Neverland is better. But as a world, um, as far as the world goes with, you know, story and uh, story consequences and boss fights, um, you got to give it to Keyblade Graveyard. Um, so really, it's going to come down to what you value more. Because um, BBS Neverland is, um, you know, one of the top worlds in that game. I think it's my number two world um, in that game. And the graveyard, like, it's, you know, it, it tries. It has, like, that beginning portion with the demon tied and the thousand bad guys. Um, and then it has, like, a couple of little portions with, like, the dodging the blocks and the, the floor puzzles. But that's really it. And then the rest of it is, um, you know, fights and cutscenes, which I think they're all really good. They're all, as you saw if you watched the KH3 boss ranking, they're, most of them are top ten fights um, and great scenes. Some of those scenes were in my... Uh, top 10 favorite scenes so there's a lot of crazy stuff happening um i'd probably lean towards the graveyard just in terms of like it being a culmination like there's so much coming to a head there um but i don't hate bbs um getting votes or even moving along but it looks like uh the temperature is in favor of the graveyard uh lazy john 135 thank you for the follow there you got zeta flare yeah by the way that's another word i've been trying to correct myself on because in year one and two of regular Pat, I said Syax. Syax, because that's how Axel says it. I swear, Syax has her. She's in the castle dungeon because Syax captured her. But uh, Vodka came along and said, why are you saying Syax? It's Syax. And then you listen to any other character say it, and you're like, oh, yeah, it is Syax. Um, so I changed that. I think I've been pretty good about that. If you go and look in videos or VODs since Got Vodka corrected me, I think I've uh, been pretty good at that. But I've also been saying Zeta Flare. It's, why am I saying Zeta Flare? It's not Zeta, it's Zeta. It's Zeta Flare. I think it's because of how Donald says it, maybe? But even that, when I go back, I'm like, I think he's just saying Zeta. Um, so, I'm trying to say Zeta Flare. Sorry, Baka, but I think you're <laughs> I think you're a little bit beyond that. Um, I say aesthetic weird. Uh, how am I supposed to say aesthetic? A aesthetic? <laughs> how am I supposed to say that? Aesthetic? Because oh, I say aesthetic, I put I put emphasis on the a, so it's aesthetic. You're supposed to like not pronounce the a. Aesthetic? It's definitely not aesthetic. You get rid of the a though. Well, why don't people correct me more often? Let me run around like an idiot. Aesthetic. I just feel like that sounds dumb. <laughs> like I know it's probably right, and I, I I'm the dumb one, but it sounds dumb. Um, a graveyard one, by the way. I didn't get the percentage there, but aesthetic. What? I can't possibly question. correct you more. Well, you just did. Um, do you think the cage games need a pronunciation guide? I think I need a pronunciation guide. Um, they tend to make up names or use mythological ones. Um, I think it'd be a cool thing to include in, like, an Ultimania or something. Um, because, like, we didn't know that Luxord was actually Luxord. Luxord, sorry, not Luxord. Um, I'm getting that mixed up with Luxu. Um, I still refuse to say Luxord. Um, you know, I said Marluxia until, um, until that was voiced. Um, uh, but that would be a neat thing to have. Um, what else? What other controversies with that? I guess, um, Titus Titus, but that's not, you know, a Kingdom Hearts character. 
Okay, you know what? Instead, from now on, I'll say aesthetic. Also, welcome back, Gold Sky. All right. Um, KC Twilight Town versus Dream Drop Traverse Town. Um, yeah, it's crazy that we like spent so much time, fucking, uh, you know, wringing our hands about. Oh, we move Traverse Town ahead, but for me, it's like so easily Twilight Town. Um, I think Traverse Town and DDD is the best uh, world in that game, um, but Twilight Town is also the best world in KH2, and that is a better game. So, and it's also just better designed, and uh, you know, there's more time spent there, and it's it feels like home again. Um, very very comfy, cozy. I don't I don't hate Traverse Town um, moving or getting votes. It, it certainly can't move ahead, but I don't, I don't hate it getting you know 29% of the votes so far. Um, Twilight Town, not better than Cage 1 Hollow Bastion. I would say that, uh, oh, Cage 2 is way better than Dream Drop, especially after having played it. Um, comparing both my casual and my, you know, more hardcore experiences with the games, Cage 2 comes out ahead uh, on both occasions. Um, and it's, it's really not even a conversation. Um, there are bad moments in, uh, in Cage 2's level 1. Um, I know that the Dream Drop level 1 is kind of a special case and the fact that it's supposed to be, you know, a, a new game plus, but, um, it's just bad. Uh, Ali's got a joke. Which KH1 song is safe for pool diving? The Deep End. Uh, the Deep End, for sure. Uh, sorry for ruining it, but... Uh, this, this, there's no way it's not. It's not the shallow end, it's the Deep End. Yeah. Uh, well done, Ali. Thank you. Um, yeah, I've, I've never, not once in my life have I said Dream Drop is better than 2. You can go back as far as uh, 2020 on the channel, and probably earlier, but it had never been explicitly stated until maybe the, uh, the game ranking video. Um, all right, we'll move uh, Twilight Town ahead. That'll be uh, 72 to 28%. Yeah, we ran through the Yule Log, and then we did a little bit of FF10, and then I realized, you know what? We were so in the Christmas spirit. Let's actually get some festive tunes. Keep them going here. Somebody uh, suggested that. Um, all right, moving along, we have KH2 Olympus versus KH1 Olympus. Ha! Huh. I didn't think uh, two iterations of the same world would have to meet up this soon. Um, wow. I think it's probably Cage 2. Um, I love the cups way more in one, but I think, you know, you get more bang for your buck with the experience in Cage 2. Orin is so good. Um, I don't even hate the world design that much. Um, I mean, it is my favorite Disney World in the game, kind of by default, to be honest, with Cage 2. Um... Just because I think, like, you know, you have rooms like the uh, the Lost Pass or the, the Passage of the Dead or something like that. And I, like, the names kind of blur together. Um, where it's, like, not entirely a straight shot all the time. Um, I wish there was a little bit more um, time spent in the proper Coliseum. Like, it's so kind of dark and dank in the underworld. Um, you know, again, Olympus uh, in KH1 has, like, really fun cups. Um, I think they're more memorable. Um, you know, the boss fights there are obviously really cool um, in the, in the uh, Coliseum. Although, Cage 2 Coliseum has um, Hydra, which I think is one of the best fights in the series, to be honest. Um, I, I think even the Pete fight is pretty fun. Um, the Cerberus fight is whatever. Cerberus is obviously better in one. More imposing, more intimidating, more of a challenge. Um, what else? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you get two visits, and the first visit to Cage 2 Olympus is just, like, fucking jam-packed, so... It's my OC. Um, it looks like people are going for um, Cage 2. Yeah, the Cage 2 peat fight is just like nuts in Olympus. It's just like, what is going on? Um, Alright, we'll move uh, OC2 ahead, 82 to 18. I'm fine with that. We have Cage 2 Beast Castle versus BBS Radiant Garden. Um, that'll be uh, Radiant Garden for me. I know the Beast Castle is like an oddly popular like Cage 2 world. I don't know if it's because people really like Beauty and the Beast or they like um, Zaldan. Like, I will admit, as I've said earlier in the bracket, that I think the Zaldan integration is one of the better instances of Cage 2 giving a damn, even though it's still not great, if you ask me. It's like pretty good, but it could have done better. Um, Rom loves Zaldan. Um, but I think BBS Radiant Garden is, uh, really the high point of the game, as I already said. I don't want to beat a dead horse here, because we're now in, you know, repeat territory with these, uh, discussions, but, um, yeah, just so many iconic moments, so many great cameos, um, world design is overall better than anything in Beast Castle, um, I honestly, I love the, uh, the, the rearrangement of the field theme, where it's just called, uh, Radiant Garden in BBS, um, I think it's, uh, 
even reflective of where the world is at that point in the timeline. Like, it's, I say it in the uh, BBS world ranking, but it's like a city at the height of its power, you know? I feel like, um, you know, the track Hall of Ash in EKH1, like, it's dark and it's, it's, it's sinister and it's mysterious. And then reviving Hall of Ash in EKH2, like, it feels like, you know, things are starting to gain momentum again. But, like, it's so fucking grand and powerful in, uh, in BBS. That's right. <laughs> Sorry, Vogue. Yeah, go piss, girl. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm voting for Radiant Garden. Um, really, any instance of um, Hollow Bastion I'd, I'd have above Beast Castle. Um, except for Coded. But even that has, like, KH1 stuff in it, so. Um, but it's Coded, so. I guess, like, Calm, uh, Calm Hollow Bastion would lose to KH2 Beast Castle, but that's, that's really it. <clears throat> yeah, I guess Beast Castle is kind of indicative of the Cage 2 experience. It kind of contains that essence because it's like a bunch of flat, boring rooms with a lot of potential that they don't uh, really capitalize on. Um, I guess that is kind of indicative of the Cage 2 experience. No, I'm just being a dick, but, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I think there's some truth to it. I think if you... <laughs> I think if you... If you uh, think of Beast Castle when you when you hear Cage 2, it's not great. Like I feel like there there are things that you would want to think of uh, before that. I'm not knocking uh, your your take there because I think I kind of think of it too when I think of Cage 2. And I think it's not like really a great endorsement of the game when that's the first uh, first world you think of. But it's just kind of a feeling, you know. Um, the music's great though. Music pops off. Um, it does have a great boss. Yeah, was that my highest heartless boss in a? Uh, the Darkthorn in Cage 2? It might have been. Darkthorn, Grim Guardianess. That's the uh, the shared lineage there. I think that was it. Um, Darkthorn is amazing. Um, that is, I'll give it credit for um, the environmental um, interplay there with the Darkthorn fight. That's really cool. Uh, we will advance Raiding Garden uh, 73 to 27. Next up, Monstropolis versus the Final World. Uh... <laughs> Well, Rom has it seated two to seven, and uh, maybe me and Rom are weird. I feel like maybe we're weird, but like I love the final world, and I don't care about Monstropolis that much. Like I like Monsters Inc. I just feel like there's just there's like not enough there. Like there's just something missing. Um, maybe it's because it's all in the factory. Um, maybe it's just like how the world progresses. I don't know. Like I don't hate it. I really don't. It's just like kind of whatever to me. Um, I think it's always the last world I think of. Like if you ask me to name the Cage Three Disney Worlds. Maybe besides Hundred Acre Wood, uh, maybe I forget that one. Um, which you can excuse. You can't really excuse forgetting forgetting Monstropolis. Um, and I don't know why. Like Edis Venitas is at the end, and that's neat. Lump of Four is is fine, um, and there are neat bits. I just don't know why it doesn't really grab me. Um, I hate Monster Sora. That's true. Um, Vaka's got to be real. Um, so. Yeah, Final World, it, it's mysterious. The aesthetic is so pleasing. The aesthetic? I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to aesthetic. If I can say Luxord wrong, why not say aesthetic wrong? Booze door! Booze door! Booze door! Booze door! Booze door! Uh, you got that. So that's, that's you know, my Shropolis has that going for it. Um, yeah, Final World is just like... Like, again, I know it's like two rooms. Like, it's like the Star Room and the Salt Pillars. Thanks to PJ for teaching me that they're salt. Um, if Presto was an unverse, what emotion would he be? Contentedness? Um, PJ, what? PJ, I'm giving you credit. What do you want? PJ! 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 Why are you sighing at me? PJ! <laughs> PJ! All right, I'm done. Sorry. I just wanted to bother him. Um, all right, Final World moves along. 80 to uh, 20. <laughs> bet, bet, bet. <laughs> Leave PJ alone. Leave him alone! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Come on, presto. Maybe he's not as content as I thought. Why are you obsessed with me? Am I the Eminem to PJ's Mariah Carey? I was talking to regular GF about that song the other day, and uh, I don't know, people, I feel like they don't know that that's who the song is about. Mariah Carey's Obsessed is about uh, Eminem. And then uh, he hit back with a, with a diss track. There was a Mariah Eminem feud that I feel like people don't know about. All right, KH1 Hall of Bastion versus KH3 San Francisco. 
Let's go. Uh, Symphony of Sorcery. No, we'll, we'll talk about it, I guess. But um, it's just, it's not even a fucking contest. Um, it's just not even fucking close. Is he all up in my George Foreman? He is not, thankfully. He is not. Um... I mean, you know, if anyone wants to entertain that San Fran is, I mean, I, maybe people don't like Cage One Hollow Bastion because like, oh, the lift stop, oh, it's confusing, oh, the puzzle in the water. Well, like, you know, if you were seven and you, have you gone back to it since then? Are you still bad at it? Like, it's not that confusing. Um, I think people are such babies about getting lost in Hollow Bastion. Um, the music, the atmosphere, the story stakes, the boss fights. Ah, ah, it's so good. Uh, Sora, you're heading off course, and yet San Fran getting votes? Four votes? No, but it was 92%, 8% for Hollow Bastion. I hate heroes so fucking much. Uh, Sora, you're heading off course? Again, the way he treats Baymax 2, I'm, he's right there. Alright, we got Symphony of Sorcery versus the Caribbean. Ah, that's really tough! Um, Symphony of Sorcery is so creative and charming, but the Caribbean is like, really, you know, a more full experience, I think. Um, oh man, you want to give Dream Drop credit where it's due. And I know that Dream Drop, uh, the Symphony of Sorcery, is charming and it's it's cute, but like, am I really enjoying it as much as, as running around in the Caribbean? No, I'm not. Um, but I don't hate anybody voting for Symphony of Sorcery because like, you, you gotta, you gotta respect it, you know? Um, because it's, like, one of the high points of that game, which is, you know, kind of middling for the most part, I think. And the Caribbean is not, I wouldn't even say it's a high point for KH3, you know? So, it's really good, though. I think it's really good. Um, I, again, love the exploration and the, and the ship mechanics. Um, I don't know where my vote would go, to be honest. Let me see, does it even matter where it goes? It, it could matter, it's pretty close. Ugh. Like, if I'm being honest, like, neither of them are huge in the story department. You have a visit from YX in Dream Drop. Um, you have Luxord in, in the Caribbean, which doesn't really move anything ahead. Um, you got doing the movie plot-itis a bit. Um, I would say it's the doing the movie plot-itis is not as bad in the Caribbean as it is in Tangled or Frozen. Um, it's really charming. Symphony Sorcery. I think I'm gonna go with the Caribbean. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just having more fun there, you know? YX, yeah. His name is YX. Um, but, like, I, I respect Symphony of Sorcery. Like, I really do. Um, I just think pound for pound, in terms of, like, memorable and fun moments that I have playing the game, I think Symphony of Sorcery is, like, a bright spot in a pretty dull game, whereas the Caribbean is kind of, like, you know, a bright spot in a overall pretty shiny game for me. So that's, I think, where, where I come down on it. Um, and Caribbean did pull ahead there, 55 to 45%. A, a respectable showing, though. Caribbean was seated slightly higher, and it was, you know, a slight victory. All right, Cage 1 Neverland versus Cage 2 Timeless River. Oh, that's kind of tough again. Um, mm. Well, I'm probably, like, weirdly high on Neverland in Cage 1 um, because aesthetic... Aesthetic wise, um, it's you know worse than than Timeless River. It's just the the pirate ship, um, you know, navigating it is not great. Um, but I just love the mounting tension of that world, like the Sora Riku stuff. Again, I'm really coming to a head there. Um, you have great boss fights. I think Anti Sora, Captain Hook are both solid, and then the Phantom later on. I think is a really cool um, boss fight that that works with the environment. Um, getting to fly for the first time there is amazing, but you know, again, it's got the pirate ship, kind of lackluster field theme, kind of a confusing map at times, um, working against it. Um, Timeless River, you know, is where, again, all the KH2 charm goes. Um, pretty easy to navigate. Um, probably overall more memorable of an experience. I just like Neverland is like, oh, we're on this fucking, it's literally the vehicle to the end of the game. You know, we're on the ship and we're moving to Hollow Bastion. It's kind of weird for that. Um, that you're on a ship and it's not really a, a, like a solid world. Um, but, oh man. I do have Timeless River um, really high in KH2 on my rankings, but I also have Neverland pretty high. But I'll, I'll overall go for Timeless River, although it hurts, because I think Neverland is slept on. Um, it is doing very poorly, yeah. Uh, I voted for Timeless River in the end, but 
It is 78% uh, for Timeless River. <clears throat> All right. Let's do that. Moving along to Cage with Agrabah versus Cage 3 Scala. That's an easy Scala for me. Probably even without Remind. Um, Agrabah is just so... I said Cage 2 Agrabah was like, you know, the standard world. Like the C world. But, um... C as in like the letter grade, not like Shamu. Um, but Scala... Uh, Cage 1 Agrabah is better than Cage 2 Agrabah. But like, as a whole, Agrabah as an experience is like the C level. In terms of the C tier of Kingdom Hearts Worlds, I think. Um, Ali always hates Agrabah. <laughs> um, I think Scala, even just in the base game, is breathtaking and amazing and mysterious. Um, and, you know, add in that the uh, exploration portion and Remind with the Kyrie's Heart segment. Um, it's just, it's really good. Um, and it's just uh, so beautiful. So, let's just wrap that one up. 80% uh, to 20% for Scala. That ain't going anywhere. <clears throat> All right. And Scala has zero Genie Jafar fights. Agrabah has three over the course of the games. Wait. Recoded? What is a... How do you fight Jafar and recode it? I, I just did it, like, not that long ago, and I don't remember what form the Jafar fight takes in recoded. If it even has one. I... It's a blur. There was a period of time where I was streaming recoded on the weekdays and Epic Mickey on the weekend. And obviously, I have a very nice job. I'm, I really like what I do. But uh, that was a rough patch. That was a, a dull spot in a bright career for me. <laughs> you know? You fight him as a genie. Four genie Jafar fights. And they're all bad. Yeah, and King of Thieves is overall uh, the better sequel. Alright, KH1 Destiny Islands versus KH2 Halloween Town. That's going to be Destiny Islands for me. Um, even though I love Christmas, um, Destiny Islands is, is pretty... Pretty amazing as the uh, tutorial world goes. Um, I mean, I would have Twilight Town over it as a tutorial world. Um, although I guess Olympus in Cage 3 is like more fun to play. Like it's not as, um, probably not as memorable, not as iconic. Um, but you know, pound for pound, Olympus is, you know, more interesting to play through than Destiny Islands. But uh, I don't know, man. That just takes me back to being a little baby boy. Um, we could probably end that one now as well. Um, 90% to 10% for Destiny Islands. Um, Alright, moving along to... Toy Box versus Space Paranoids. Hmm. This is another thing where it's like... It's kind of... It kind of goes back to like Symphony of Sorcery versus... Um, what beat that? Uh, Caribbean. Um, whereas... Like, I probably have more fun running around in Toy Box and playing around there than I do in Space Paranoids, but, like, you want to give KH2 credit for a moment, um, at least where it excels in, uh, in an area where it often lacks, which is the, the integration of Disney and, and Kingdom Hearts stuff. Um, it's tough. Because, like, I'm not huge on Galaxy Toys, but I still probably like running around Galaxy Toys more than I do any of the various mishmash data things in Space Paranoids. Um, Space Paranoids is seated higher. Um, I love the music in Toy Box a lot more than I do in Space Paranoids. Um, I think the boss fights are probably better in Toy Box. Like, I think I probably... Like, I, I'm not crazy on King of Toys, but I'm also not crazy on Hostile Program. Sark and the MCP are fine. Um, Angelic Amber is, is fine. Um... I don't know. I don't know, it's tough. What are you saying is forgettable, Vodka? Name one fucking room in Space Paranoids. The Pit Cell, the Canyon, the Data Scape, the IO Tower, Solar Sailor, or the Central Computer Mesa. But I'm kind of a freak, you know? Um, so that doesn't really count. Um, let me see what the poll is at. Space Paranoids is in the lead. I might as well uh, lump in with Toy Box just to make it interesting. <laughs> so, just to make it a little neater, you know? Um, now I've made it an even 60-40 split. So, uh, Tron finds the data to Hollow Bastion and such wholesome friendship with SDG. Yeah, that's true. Tron is like an all-timer party member. Um, I think as a party member, I probably have Tron above both Buzz and Woody. Um, uh, Beep, thank you for uh, gifted another sub today. That is uh, Beep's fourth. For a Capri Sun 434. God, I haven't had a Capri Sun in a while. Um, I'd go for one of those. What was your go-to? I always liked uh, Strawberry Kiwi. 
Um, shout out to Kiwi. Um, throw up a Kiwi. I haven't I haven't heard from him in a bit. I hope he's he's doing all right. <laughs> we're we're kind of weird where we we don't uh, we don't like talk constantly. We like, get into phases where like all right now we're in like big patty kiwi hours. Um, what is this question? I'll let you all I'll let him know that you're all uh, thinking of him. Um, Hollow Bastion Cage Two versus Castle of Dreams. Yeah, sorry Ruthie, um, but uh, it ends here. Um, Hollow Bastion is gonna be my vote there. Um, this is more a question to everyone than just Pat. But did anyone else think that Tron was an original character when they played Cage Two as a kid? I had never heard the movie. Yeah, I kind of touched on that in my um, Cage 2 world rankings where I was like, this is not like up there with like Aladdin and, you know, Beauty and the Beast as like an all-timer Disney classic. So I think I was definitely kind of um, like, I was like, this doesn't seem like everything looks kind of off. So I don't think it's original, but I, I feel like I don't know where this is from, you know. Um, so there was definitely some confusion there for me. Um, we, we don't even need to really talk this one through, right? Um Cage 2 Hollow Bastion will advance. Again, sorry, Ruthie. A wonderful dream come fake! Oh, dream so sad. Um, Alright, that'll be 88 to 12%. You know what? I knew about Tron Guy. I knew about Tron Guy, but I don't know if I knew, like, the actual movie. Like, I'm not even sure if I knew that Tron Guy was based on Tron the movie. Like, I just thought, oh, it, he's called Tron Guy. Um, uh, how to train your Gavin? Uh, thank you so much for the uh, four months. Every time I pop into your streams, I get in the mood for Kingdom Hearts all over again. You know what? That's the intention, baby. I'm a, I'm a sleeper agent sent by Square Enix to get you to buy the games and replay them over and over. Um, that's not true. I wish it was though. Um, all right, we have uh, and thank you again so much. Uh, how to train your Gavin for the four months? Um, Tron backwards is Nort. Um, we have Cage Three Olympus versus Cage Two World that Never Was. Um, I do love Cage 3 Olympus. I think it's very fun to play around in, but, uh, you know, you can't really stack up against all the iconic boss fights and cutscenes and just the energy and atmosphere and the aesthetic of the world that never was. So I'll vote for that. Um, but Olympus is, uh, you know, a strong contender. Um, it's not going to go down without a fight, hopefully. Well, it's only, you know, I got eight votes so far. 80 to 20% so far. But I respect Olympus a lot. <clears throat> yeah, I don't expect uh, Cage 3 to uh, really have a strong presence in the uh, Sweet 16. What have we even sent through? Um, we sent through Caribbean. Um, Twilight Town died in this round. Arendelle died in the first round. San Fran died in this round. Corona died in either the... was one of the rounds. Um, Monstropolis is dead. Well, Scala is alive. Um, Final World is alive. Is Graveyard still alive? I think it is. So it's really the original ones. Obviously in Departure or Dark World, they're dead. Hundred Acre Wood is dead. Um, all right, let's send through World of Never Was. That'll be 82 to 18. Um, moving on to, oh, we're actually going on to the Sweet 16 now. All right, we're getting down to it, folks. We have Traverse Town KH1 versus Halloween Town KH1. Uh, even though I love both of those, that's it's so easily Traverse Town for me. Uh, would Tron's nobody name be Toxrin? Um, Zornt? Uh, Nort X? Probably Nort X. Let Halloween Town die already. I mean, this would be where I would let it die. Um, if it were going up against, uh, you know, several other worlds in this round, I probably would advance it, but not against Traverse Town. That's, uh... I think overall my second favorite world in the entire series. It's second in KH1 and still probably second overall in the whole series. Um, only beaten by Hall of Bastion for me. Um, it's just so fucking cozy. Like, that's my home. I'm not a religious man, but if I die, I want to go to Traverse Town. I mean, if. Um, that's not going to happen. Um, I said I'm the only person who's not going to die. So, I ever did that death video where I stated that, that truth. Um, but if it does happen, I want to go to Traverse Town. Um, and just hang out in the first district. And I could see that with Twilight Town too. I, I could totally see that. Um, I just like the, the atmosphere of Traverse Town a bit more. Um, sure, it's not a dead world. I guess the final world would be where I would more likely go. Because, uh, I do have ties with the, uh, I do have ties with, um, people and places and things. Which I guess is the only qualifying factor to go to the final world. Is, like, if you still have attachments to the, the living world. Which... I feel like most people do, unless you're just like, you know, kind of done with it. Um, all right, Traverse Town moves along, 87 to 13, first victory of the Sweet 16. 
Next, we have End of the World in KH1 versus Keyblade Graveyard in KH3. Oh man. Well, it's another thing of um, the world itself being more interesting to explore in End of the World, um, but the story stakes and the cutscenes um, in the boss fights being overall better in the uh, in Keyblade Graveyard. Um, I mean, in Cage One is is no slouch. End of the world is no slouch in terms of the bosses. Um, Chernabog is such a cool surprise so late in the game. Um, the Ansem fights. I mean, Ansem One on Depressing the Islands, Ansem Two in the Crater, World of Chaos is is an amazing gauntlet um, just for the absolute absurdity of it. World Terminus is really cool. Um, the giant crevasse, which has somehow gone unmentioned this far into the bracket, is an amazing room, which I would have had as the best room in that world for that, that project, if not for the Hollow Bastion lab room um, with the, the machine, the Ark. Um, Keyblade Graveyard, again, not really that interesting to play through in terms of like the non-fighting portions, but those fighting portions are huge. I um, mean, the cutscenes are just crazy. Um, yeah, the crevasse is so good. The giant crevasse. Um, Ali could not care about this one either way. Wow. Um, Agrabah, uh, or Ali, staunch Agrabah hater, but does not care about these uh, these two uh, <laughs> culminations. Which, you know what? I respect it. I respect Ali's stance. Um, I mean, in terms of the vibe of End of the World, like, it's so fucking weird. It's so weird. Um, and the graveyard is kind of passe by KH3. Like, you know, they, they set it up in BBS, and they... I just feel like they never did a ton with it. <sighs> I don't know. Like, they, obviously, they have stuff set there, but, like, in terms of, like, what it is and what it means, like, it's just... It's just where people fought. Like, that's all it really is. I wish there was a bit more to it at this point. Um, End of the World crushed it. That's crazy. I thought it'd be closer. End of the World was seated lower. Um, well, there goes another Cage 3 world. Um, all right. I'm fine with it, though. We have Cage 2 Twilight Town versus Cage 2 Olympus. Um, sort of like with this matchup up here with Traverse Town and Halloween Town in one. Uh, Twilight Town and Olympus in two is an easy Twilight Town for me, even though I quite like Olympus's showing in two. I think it's uh, not really even a contest. Um, you know, Orin would probably be the only thing that uh, I could see if you're like a big Orin guy at this point, at this juncture of the bracket. Um, but. Twilight Town, um, better layout overall, um, just a more memorable atmosphere. I mean, really, it's so much of Olympus and two is, is the underworld, and it's it's a little mushy. Um, I mean, it's got good boss fights, I would say. Um, Twilight Town, though, that prologue is it's just it's uh, it's nearly peak cage too. It's a uh, it's one of the places that I would say. Uh, most people would be likely to settle down in, in the Kingdom Hearts universe if they could pick a pick a place to live, you know? Um, at this point, at this junction, localized entirely within this bracket, that's like my Mickey, all of us together moment. Um, the KH2 prologue, it's like one of the three high points of KH2 and one of the high points of the series. I mean, in terms of the, uh, on a storytelling level, like if you wanted to make a case for uh, Kingdom Hearts having good writing and good storytelling, I think the prologue is one of the first five things you point to. Um, I think there's some day stuff you can point to. Um, I think there's, you know, some KH3 stuff you can point to. Maybe not as um, evidently, but... But I don't know. Um, Alright, Twilight Town, 91 to 9%. Pretty easy there. Next, uh, BBS Radiant Garden versus KH3 Final World. Uh... I think I'm going to Final World again. Like, I just... I know it's so short, but it's so powerful. And uh, I love Radiant Garden. Best world in BBS, I think. I've, you know, I've already said many times in the bracket. Amazing cameos. Um, fun TVA moments. Well, you know, the, the few that you actually get of all of them together. Um, cool environments that they expand on from 1 and 2. I guess I guess 2, really. There's really no 1 um, expansions. Um... Music is great, but Final World is just, oh boy, it's so good. Um, so that's where I'm going, but I don't mind, uh, I don't mind Radiant Garden going ahead. Um, but it looks like uh, Final World is pretty steadily in the lead there. Um, it's really good. Listen, it's really good. 
but like it, it did not make me feel things in the way that the final world did i was just like and maybe i'm maybe i'm small brain for this but uh it's like wow a, a white void like <laughs> you know but it's beautiful and it was just weird that sore is like kind of dead you know like i was like sore's dead like i know that this game like he's gonna come back and it's gonna be fine but i was like i couldn't believe that the game like went there in a way um like it just gave me like i just had like this uneasy feeling from that point up until the end of the game like i, I went through all of the graveyard like still kind of like wow remember the fucking final world that was nuts um, he has died a couple times, yeah. So maybe maybe even that's kind of passe, but... Yeah. Final World got truly dead people that can't move on. Yeah, it's purgatory, you know? Um, it has this heavenly aesthetic, but it's, um... It really is purgatory when you look at the uh, description, the nuts and bolts of the, the Final World mechanics. Um, Final World Stars has some Unicross writing. Yeah, it's, it's, uh... I mean... Unicross, for, for all of its faults, I do think, uh, has some, has some decent writing in there. You got the Namel Star, you got Namine, and the Sora Collection is just so good. I'm probably having more fun with the Sora Collection than any gameplay moment in BBS Raiding Garden. Um, and maybe I'm having more fun seeing Lee meet Ven, um, but in terms of, like, playing the game, I think I gotta go, uh, Final World there. Okay. We have KH1 Hollow Bastion versus the Caribbean. Really, again, not a contest. Um, again, it's like, yeah, the Caribbean is really good. It's fun for, for what it is in that game. But um, Hollow Bastion is just like a titan for me. Um, and it's, it's just really no contest. Unless you really hate the Lip Stomp um, or you really love uh, naval warfare. I don't, I don't know. Uh, there's five people who voted for Caribbean. But listen, I'm not going to yuck your yums except for I'm a, I'm a little bit yucking your yums. Like, it's good. I love it. It's it's going to be high up when I do that project, but this is, like, the OG, you know? Um, buffoon prefers the Disney World. That's fair. <clears throat> Ugh. God, I love Animal Crossing music. So good. Um, all right, we can move that ahead, right? 80 to 20 for Hollow Bastion. I mean, the Caribbean made a great run. Like, I didn't expect it to play or to uh, get all the way into the Sweet 16, so. Maybe it had a series of favorable matchups. I mean, it beat Symphony of Sorcery. That was not nothing. Um, Atlantica was kind of a was kind of a buy, but bye. Um, all right, let's scroll back over here. Um, I have played Animal Crossing, just not on stream. I think it'd be pretty boring on stream, to be honest. Although, there is a market. I know there's there are Animal Crossing streamers. Um, Cage 2 Timeless River versus Skull Ad Kylum in Cage 3. Uh, people are gonna hate this, but, like, as charming as Timeless River is, uh, like, I just had more fun running around in Scala. Um, I, I, I'm gonna be okay if it gets fucking blown out by Timeless River, but, like, I, I don't know. As a kid, when I played Timeless River, I, I didn't even think it was that cool. Uh, I think it's something you probably appreciate more when you're older, because, like, as a kid, you kind of find black and white cartoons boring. Um, and I'm like, this isn't even a Disney movie. Like, this is, like, a fucking old-timey cartoon short. Like, I didn't really care, if I'm being honest. Being really honest, um, as a kid, it's whatever. That's something where you, you know, you, uh, refine your palate a bit. But Scala, uh, immediately hit, on impact, you know? Um, it's just cool immediately. Um... I would have thought it was even cooler as a kid. So if I thought it was cool when I was 22 when I first saw it, um, yeah, what if Scala had like ghosts to talk to, like more Final World type shit, like key kids running around or something, like a uh, like uh, Daybreak Town key kids that are like still lingering there for some reason, something like that, you know? Um, so I don't know. Well, I don't know if I tipped the scales on this one or if that's where it was gonna go anyway, but uh, it looks like Scala is gonna take that one home, kind of a runaway too. It's closer, though, than the last one. It's 70 to 30 for Scala. Um, yeah, maybe you, you could argue that, like, Scala and Final World are kind of, like, maybe hitting some redundancy. Like, they're, it's like a similar, like, bright white aesthetic. Sorry. Aesthetic. Um, you know, and spooky sort of. Like, it's, it's pristine, it's serene, but it's also spooky and unsettling. Um, they're both kind of, like, you know, nudging into that territory. Um, but... I, I just wanted more of that energy after I, um, after I had Final World. 
it's hard to not it's hard to like obfuscate my opinions while talking through the world though like i want to like give commentary but it's going to be it's going to be biased commentary um destiny islands cage one versus space paranoids cage two yeah it's, it's destiny islands um space paranoids again i respect it had a good run um but you know you're not gonna you're not gonna beat that sorry no it's not even close <laughs> it's not even close i'm sorry uh yeah well i said that uh king dragoon but i forgot that like we had like the original worlds um i i honestly i don't even know what the matchups are i it, it goes you know in my brain while i'm talking about it, and then it's out once we're on to the next matchup I don't anticipate that Scala or Final World will make it past the Elite Eight. Um, certainly not both. I feel like one's got to go, if not both of them. Um, just trying to think of what it's going to go up against. I mean, I know that Traverse Town and two Hall of Bastions and Destiny Island is going to be in there. Um, Space Paranoids, maybe easy matchups. Uh, maybe Toy Box. I mean, it's a good. It's one of the best KH2 worlds. Um, it beat Disney Town. That was kind of a buy, but. Yeah, so really, it, ha it had to conquer Toy Box, and, it, and it's going to die here against Destiny Islands, so, you know. How did it be Toy Box? Eh. I, I voted for Toy Box, but I get it. I can see it. Um, all right, let's 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 advance Destiny Islands, 74-26. All right, and it's the last of the Sweet 16. It sure is. It's uh, Cage 2 Hollow Bastion versus Cage 2 World It Never Was. Um, just judging from my own world ranking, I would go World It Never Was, but I don't hate anybody for doing Hall of Bastion. You got the Battle of a Thousand Heartless there. Um, you get a lot of Final Fantasy synergy, probably like the last main burst of that in the series proper. I guess you get a little bit of it in Remind, but not in as major of a way. Um, but I just really like the endgame of KH2 um, a lot. Like I just think that, that whole final gauntlet is really, uh, really stunning. Um, but, you know, I, I don't hate Hollow Bastion going ahead. Honestly, on any given day, I could see myself, you know, favoring the, the mid-game. Maybe even today's that day. I don't know. Just thinking about it now. I don't know. I guess I just really like, like, I love the Zigbar fight. I love the, all the Xemnas fights. Um, the Psyx fight is fine. Um, the Luxord fight is fine. The Roxas fight is great. I mean, that's a final mix, but... Um, there's really cool, uh, geography for that world. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's a really visually interesting place. Um, so. I go so far to say is HB is the only part of KSU's story I genuinely enjoy. Wow. I mean, I, I genuinely enjoy the story aspects of all three major points of KSU, of beginning, middle, and end. It's all the middle shit that is, is, you know, kind of schlock, but, um, it's not schlock, it's just, you know, people forget that it's not, <laughs> it's not paced very well. Um, well, it looks like uh, World of Never Was is gonna, oh no, it's tied. Well, I'm voting for World of Never Was to break the tie so far, but if you want to tie it up again, you can, any lurkers out there. Um, yeah, World of Never Was does have a lot of mystique to it, and I guess you could, like, apply that same mystique to Hollow Bastion, like, I mean, I guess you know that at least people live in Hollow Bastion, but, like, why is there a big city in the world that never was? Like, have there ever been people who lived there? How long has that, has this world been here? Like, has it only been there since nobody's came into existence? Like, was it founded? Like, we're never going to know. It's going to be one of those things that never gets an explanation. Um, it's not going to be like a Daybreak Town or a Scala where, like, it has some sort of origin. Um, yeah, Rom's getting the, getting the seeds validated. Oh, it tied at the end, though. It tied at the very end, so let's do a, a runoff. Yeah, in my in my money, for my money, in my, in my books, H uh, HB two is definitely a downgrade from HB one. Like if, if they're going up against each other, HB one wins every time, every day of the week. It's not even a thing where oh maybe on a certain day, no, it always. I already voted in the poll though. Like I, I voted in the actual thing, so we have to do another uh, tiebreaker vote um, just until we uh, I guess break anyone's spirits to vote the other way. Don't vote this time, okay? I will not vote this time unless it's a, a tie again. Um, World Never Was, pulling ahead by one vote. Now it's tied again. Um, we're lingering on a tie. Hollow Bastion pulls ahead. If we get another tie, then I will break the tie this time. Unless, uh... Oh, oh. World Never Was is now pulling ahead with a stronger lead. Um, I want to vote. I want to participate. I want to have fun. All right, we will send a world that never was ahead. 
Um, all right. Moving on to the... That's true. Um, that, that is something we have. We didn't touch on that at all um, throughout this whole bracket, but KH2 Hollow Bastion does have the Cavern of Remembrance, which is, like, the really only um, level design moment, <laughs> a certified level design moment for KH2 where it's not flat and boring. Um, but even that's Final Mix. And even that, I think people and even i overstate like how good it is like it's good for cage 2 standards you know um all right we have the elite eight traverse town in cage one versus end of the world in cage one um kind of surprised end of the world man to the elite eight but uh that's an easy traverse town for me um you know it's just like the hub world for me um throughout the series like i think you, you could say that the the vibe and the uh the story stuff in twilight town exceeds that of Traverse Town, and uh, on certain days I might agree with you, um, but the the feeling of like coming back to a home base and like being safe and secure and, and stockpiling and, and resupplying on your on your stuff, all the characters, like you save the puppies, they go back there, Geppetto and Pinocchio relocate there, you got the Final Fantasy crew base there, um, it's just like, that's the nexus, you know, uh, 100 Acre Wood is there. Um, seeing as I'm sick, what is your go-to meal when sick? Well, you know what? Um, when I was sick coming off of my surgery, I got into the Lipton, uh, noodle soups. They were so good on the throat. It was just like, it was like heaven in a little bag that you uh, stir up in a pot of water. Very easy to make, very quick. Um, it feels good. Not a ton of, uh, you know, like, I was gonna say meat to it, but that doesn't really work when it's a food metaphor, but, um, it was like in a little, uh, little soup bag. It was like it's powder, you know, you like put it in, it's like, uh, it's not real soup, but it was like, it's cheap, it hit, it made me, made my throat feel really good. Um, is it not like a powder? Am I, am I forgetting? Uh, maybe powder is the wrong word. Like Lipton soup, um, mix. I guess it's a mix, you know? Um, I'm looking this up right now. Yeah, you know, let me, I'll post a, uh, I'll post a link to an image. <laughs> it's a target. <laughs> you want to... If you want to buy it, Alpha, here's a, here's a link. I'm not making soup from scratch. I was fucking sick and tired. I just got my gallbladder taken out. You fucking throw it into the, into the pot. You boil the water. It's easy. Cheap. All right. Um, thank you, Daybreak. All right. Travers Town moves ahead with 66% of the vote. Kind of surprised it was even that close. Um, next round, we have KH2 Twilight Town versus uh, Final World KH3. I do think I probably um, end the Final World's run there. Um, you gotta give uh, credit to Twilight Town there. Um, you know, basically everything I said about KH1 Twilight Town, or Tra Traverse Town, minus the feeling of it being like a hub. Like, KH2 has the hub in Radiant Garden, um, but it doesn't really feel the same. And Twilight Town, um, you know, is kind of closed off to you for most of the game. I wish it had, like, I wish, like, struggle was something that was, like, available in uh, more places. Like, I wish you could have that in Radiant Garden and make it feel like more of a centralized location. Um, or maybe, like, you could have, like, Scrooge, like, you know, take struggle from one uh, world to another and make it, like, a thing that you could do in multiple places. Um, I think that'd be cool. But, um, yeah, Twilight Town is just, uh, it's one of the... Only um, base game KH2 locations with, again, interesting level design, um, interconnected spaces, um, cool Final Fantasy stuff with the uh, restoration, not the restoration, the uh, disciplinary committee. Um, the prologue is just like one of the best um, story moments in the games. The tram, it has a train. Um, so let's, uh, let's advance Twilight Town. Um, but again, you know, tons of love for Final World, 78 to 22 for Twilight Town. All right, we have KH1 Hollow Bastion versus Skull Ad Kylum KH3. It's going to be Hollow Bastion for me um, because without Hollow Bastion, uh, I, I don't think you have a Skull Ad Kylum. You know, um, Skull Ad Kylum is tapping into that energy of Hollow Bastion that I that I first felt as a wee lad in 2002 or three. I'm not sure when I made it to Hollow Bastion. Um, yeah, the Hollow Bastion library alone, I might have to put above Skull Ad Kylum. Can we uh, look at the Disney worlds that made it to the Sweet 16 at the end of this and pit them against each other? Um, we could. Yeah, we could take a look at that. Um, yeah, HB is, is very spooky. Um, the Rising Falls. Like, is there a better first impression for a world in the entire series than the Rising Falls? Um, hidden bookshelf passage shit. Um, it's so good. 
yeah, if if uh, if he had Skull in KH1, like I would have loved to see what a Skull like Harlem would look like in like the KH1 engine and like the the uh, leveled philosophy, the design philosophy, because um, you know there is no climb in KH3. It's all kind of like a base level. Um, but I think KH1 would have added, and it, Hollow Bastion has like that that verticality too, which I always love in in not just Kingdom Hearts but really any video game. Um, vertical progression I always find to be more satisfying and there's just like more momentum to it for me um, when you're when you're progressing through a level that way any major upsets um, we can go back and look I feel like no I feel like um, at most maybe a two or three seed differential um, you can freeze the bubbles it's it's pretty insane yeah that's gonna be my final words it's gonna be on my my tombstone um, all right we will advance Hollow Bastion uh, 73 to 27 percent there um, and then we have KH1 Destiny Islands versus uh, KH2 World of Never Was. Uh, I do think I would advance uh, World of Never Was here. Um, as nostalgic and as cozy as Destiny Islands is, your time there is pretty short-lived, um, especially on a, a repeat playthrough where you know what you need to do. Like, there's some worlds where you're playing through the game again, you're still, like, sinking a lot of time into it. Um, but even on your second or third playthrough of KH1, you're, you're gonna kind of breeze through Destiny Islands. Um, and maybe, you know, replayability should not be something that you, uh, really factor into this stuff, but even still, I think, first impression-wise, um, the world that never was sticks with you, or at least stuck with me, um, more, more dramatically than Destiny Islands did. Um, I mean, this gets teased out in the, uh, KH1 secret ending, even, so that's a, a cool, um, loop to have closed there by the end of the game. Um, it, it's a very weird place. Um, you wish Destiny Islands were shorter? I wish it was longer, actually. I wish there was, like, another day where maybe... Maybe you, like, talk to people before you leave. Um, because everyone, like... I, it would have cut down, like, a lot of annoying jokes. Like, maybe make Sora's mom, like, a character that you see. Maybe, uh, you know, talk to the Final Fantasy kids. Maybe go to the main island for a day. Um, even if it's only, like, kind of, um, handholdy, like, go from A to B cutscene stuff. Like, I feel like it could have fleshed things out a bit more and felt the made you feel the impact of the of the end of that world a bit more strongly. Like, I still think it's really strong um, with the two days you get there, but I do wish, and even just for giving Kyrie some more time, because Kyrie spends most of the game asleep, um, or, you know, unconscious, so I think uh, I think a third Destiny Islands day actually would have benefited not just the game, but the series, and especially Kyrie, um, a lot. But that was like, if, if they did like a KH1 remake project, I would add a third Destiny Islands day. Um... But yeah, I, I agree with Trio. Like, it, it's pretty good for 2002, but I, I wish they would have, uh, you know, maybe revisited it and done some more with it. Maybe some Man Island stuff. Um, did Zemnis obtain his trucker's license legally? Could he even uh, be forklift certified on top of that? Um, I don't know. I doubt it. I doubt it. Why would he? He probably stole it. Um, if he's going to, you know, steal hearts for Kingdom Hearts, why, why would he, uh, you know, resist Grand Theft Auto? I would think that he's probably not a licensed driver. Um, I also think he probably operates forklifts illegally. Uh, more than ever was, will proceed 69% to 31%. Pretty nice. All right, now we're in the final four. We have Traverse Town KH1 versus Twilight Town KH2. I know what's going to happen, right? But I just think, you think about you think about your first time playing KH1, right? It's this Traverse Town, right? It's this refuge. It's this... It's literally a town that bends to the wills of the refugees who needed to be, who who who, who have these needs of, of their their worlds have disappeared. I'm like I'm spiraling because I really want to explain to you how good it is. You have the puppies. You have Pinocchio and Geppetto relocate. You have the Hollow Bastion crew. It's so fucking good. You have um uh reasons to return to it. You have more interesting level design. Even though Twilight Towns is really good, and the music is really good in both of them. And the story stuff is better in Twilight Town. It's true. I will say that. There's more heavy story stuff happening there. But just, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. I'm overdosing. Please, please vote for it. Please vote for Travis Town. Ah, it's so close. <laughs> it's so close right now. Um, music is better in Twilight Town. Uh, I do think working together is a better battle theme than uh, hand in hand. Um, but I think I prefer Traverse Town over Lazy Afternoons, and especially Afternoon Streets. Um, Twilight Town is really cool. You get the, the Roxas and Sora side of it. Um, you get the data and the real. That's neat. I think it's cool. But Traverse Town, bro, 
You can jump on the roofs in KH1 Traverse Town in the first district. Everything is interconnected. The gizmo shop, ringing the bell, the guard armor fight, SDG meet here in the third district. Uh, the exposed wires that you cast thunder on, environmental level progression, casting fire on the door, that's so cool. Jumping across the little hippo rocks, um, trinity marks, those are fun. The accessory shop, the moogle shop above, uh, Huey Dewey and Louie running an item store on their own. Ah, ah, please, please vote for Traverse Town, I need two people to vote for Traverse Town. <laughs> Sid, Sid is in Traverse Town, he has a stick in his mouth, it's cool. SDG, uh, what else can I say? Um, uh, uh, no, no, no! <laughs> Jabeem, Jabeem! <laughs> God damn it, this sucks. Yeah, I voted. All right, well, that's not my winner. <sighs> okay. We have Hollow Bastion KH1 versus World Never Was. It's an easy Hollow Bastion. As good as I find the finale to KH2, it doesn't even come close to the Hollow Bastion experience in KH1. Um, ha! Yeah! Um, there were a lot of good reasons. There were. Um, I kind of, I, kinda, I, I biffed it at the beginning, but I, I think I picked it up. I was like trying to construct a grander argument, but really I was like, let's just start throwing shit out. Let's just start giving all the high points. Nachos! Never let it be said. One vote couldn't make a difference. That's right, Nachos. That's right. Go vote. Everyone vote. I know there's no, no elections happening right now. Maybe in Georgia? When's the runoff? Um, but, uh, yeah. Your vote can make a difference. Vote.org. Um, Alright, let's send Hollow Bastion through. 69 to 31 again. Pretty happy with that. Well, it's coming down to Twilight Town versus Hollow Bastion. And once again, as good as the beginning of Cage 2 is with Twilight Town. It is, uh, where are we? I gotta zoom out a bit. I'm lost. Um, it doesn't even come close to Hollow Bastion for me. Like, uh, they're both, this is my favorite world in Cage 2 this is my favorite world in Cage 1 but there's still, like, a valley between the two. Um, teased to be this big city, and the city was like nothing, a nothing burger. The world is another fucking castle. PJ hates the world that never was. The world that never was sucks, says PJ. Well, it didn't advance past the Hollow Bastion, so you got your wish, PJ. But we're in the final stretch here for the championship of Cage Worlds. We've got Twilight Town in Cage 2. Again, a beautiful prologue, a beautiful location. Um, if I wanted to live in a world, I'd rather live in Twilight Town than Hollow Bastion, especially in Cage 1. Cage 1 Hollow Bastion is spooky. But you have environments like the Rising Falls, even the Lip Stop. You ever look up in there? Oh my god, it's beautiful. The library, did I say the library? Um, you got, um, 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 the Grand Hall with the fucking crystallized princesses. But Twilight Town, you got, you know, um, the train, the clock tower that you can't go to in-game. Um, the beach that you can't go to in-game. There's, like, all these things you can't go to. Um, what else can't you go to? Roxas's house. You can't go there. No, there's, there's plenty of stuff in Cage 1. There are any cutscenes that you can't go to. But, um... You, you know, Twilight Town's got that whole second portion. It's really cool. The uh, the Sunset Terrace and all that. It's like a second part of the town that you didn't even know existed until like halfway through the prologue. That's really neat. Um, it's interconnected. Um, I love how it's it's laid out in that way. Um, but Hollow Bastion's got that fucking vertical level design, baby. I love that. Olette lives in Twilight Town. That's true. As does Jesse the shopkeeper and Wallace and um, Biggs. And Wedge, maybe? Or Wedge might be in, in Rainy Garden. Um, yeah, who was Roxas living with? Uh, Ansem the Wise didn't program that in. Um, it is curious to think about, though. You never really... It's weird. You never think about Roxas' parents, because he obviously doesn't have any. But it's like, did, did he program any in? I guess not. Um, well, it looks pretty solidly Hollow Bastion. It wasn't even really that close. Uh, 63 to 37% uh, for Hollow Bastion there. And I am... More than happy with that. You know, we, we took some L's along the way. I would have had Hollow Bastion beat Traverse Town anyway, so whatever. Cage 2 stands. Be satiated, I suppose, with your second place finish, just like as the games uh, finish in general. You know, Cage 1 over 2. Cage 1 first, and uh, Cage 2. I mean, if there's a Cage 3 world, I'd, I'd probably have that. Uh, I, guess the, I guess the best shot would have been... 
would have been no cage three worlds made it to final four which i kind of anticipated um it would have had to have been the final world which yeah that was never going to make it or scala um i would have probably had scala ahead of final world but uh what the point moral of the story cage one better so <laughs> really leaning into it today um all right, folks. Well, there you go. There's our bracket. Everyone say thank you to Ramsam for making this for us. The Ramsam took time out of his day to uh, present this. Um, so there you go. Um, we wanted to take a look at the uh, Disney World. I'm not gonna do like um, like formal matchups here, but uh, just to run through the Disney Worlds that died in the Sweet 16. Um, we got Olympus, and we got Caribbean and Timeless River and Space Paranoids. Um, well, if I were to do Olympus in Cage 2 versus, um, uh, where's the next one? Caribbean? I go Caribbean. And then if I were to do Timeless River versus Space Paranoids, I probably, I don't know. What did I do in my world rankings for Cage 2? I don't remember. Because I could honestly go either way. Um, Space Paranoids has the story integration. Timeless River is, you know, got the charming visuals. And the kind of a, a nice little breather from the usual fare in Cage Two. Um, yeah, you know what? Vote out of these four. What your favorite world? Out of these four, I'd probably have most fun running around in Cage Three Caribbean. But uh, I can really get behind any of these besides Cage Two Olympus. I think it's good for Cage Two. But um, I mean, I did have it above Space Paranoids, didn't I? So am I being full of shit? And Timeless River? Did I? I don't remember. I think I had Timeless River above Olympus. I always forget that Timeless River was my favorite Disney World. I think. My opinions change over time, you know? Um, but it looks like uh, Caribbean is going to pull ahead there for the best world out of those Sweet 16 4. I guess we ran out of uh, Christmas music. Um, all right. Looks like uh, Caribbean wins that. 17, 52% there, 27 for Timeless shit? River. 12% for Space Paranoids, 9% for Olympus. Um, anyone have any cage bracket ideas? Uh, feel free to suggest them to Rom, because Rom is running low. We've done all of like the big boys, you know, we've done boss fights, scenes, quotes, worlds, rooms even. Um, so, you know, we redo the character or the Christmas song bracket this year if you get it right this time. You know, I was thinking about doing a Christmas bracket, but I don't know if we would like just redo the songs, like literally the same thing. Um, Keyblade bracket, we could do Keyblade, we could do songs. I think a song bracket could be fun. We did that on um, Keynote's podcast on uh, Sound Ideas um, for the first March Caprice. Uh, PJ was a panelist on the uh, Christmas song bracket. PJ, uh, I know I'm still sore over the uh, Christmas Baby Please Come Home losing to uh, Up on the Housetop. Almost a year ago now that happened. Makes me feel pretty bad inside, I have to say. Um... I was thinking about doing um, a bracket of the dumbest Christmas song lines. The dumbest lines in a Christmas song. I was listening to Little St. Nick by the Beach Boys. And uh, there's a line in there that goes, Christmas comes this time each year. I'm, I'm almost positive that's what they're saying, at least. Um, let me, I'll, I'll fact check that just in case. I don't want to slander the Beach Boys. But that's what I'm hearing. So if that's what I'm hearing, that's still not good. The Beach Boys, Little St. Nick. Um, I, hope, I hope I'm wrong. Cause it's really dumb. Um, I also think um, "Bring us some figgy pudding" is a really bad line. <laughs> I think, and that like the whole that whole song "We Wish You a Merry Christmas" is built on the back of "Bring us some figgy pudding," and I think that's terrible. Um, let me look up "Little Saint Nick" lyrics. I do like the song "Little Saint Nick." It's fun. Um, Christmas comes this time each year. Yeah, it tends to, Beach Boys. It tends to happen at the same time each year, I have to say. Ha! Um, I've never had Ficky Pudding, I must say. By the way, Caribbean did officially win that poll. I called it early, but it did win 56% of the vote there. Um, what are some other really dumb Christmas song lines? Um, I'm anti Figgy Pudding. <laughs> I'm going to raid? Yeah, let's raid. Uh, thank you so much for the turnout. I don't know if this is because like, everyone tagged on Discord or if you... You know what? Can everyone say, actually, before we leave, yeah, lurkers included, if you don't mind, um, how did you know that the stream was happening tonight? Um, I'm kind of curious about that. Did you come from the YouTube post? Did you just know that there was a stream because you're always uh, checking in um, Tuesdays, Thursdays? Do you get an email from Twitch, Discord, Vanboy on Discord, uh, Discord, um, PJ just knows what day it is, YouTube, Twitch notifications, YouTube post... Um, 
every yeah, Tuesday and Thursday. I know I know my regulars. I, I've seen a lot of new faces here today, so I was just curious. Um, Sense it in the air, Twitch app. Um, originally it was YouTube. Okay. I'm just thinking about you know moving forward because um, I feel like I I don't always tag everyone on Discord. I, there's a special role that you can sign up for, but maybe I maybe I should just tag everyone every time and then just maybe I'll include a guide on, on how to opt out if you don't want the everyone tag because I feel like you're in the regular pad Discord. You know, you, maybe you get an everyone tag three times a week. You know, and if you don't want it, you you turn it off. Um, yeah, if you want to opt out, then. Because I always thought, like, the, the Hall of Ashen Committee is the name of that role, and it's got, like, a hundred-something people, but there's, like, nearly a thousand people on the Discord. And I feel like a lot of people who maybe don't usually know about the streams or come to the streams uh, showed up today. Yeah, you can opt out of it. I would opt out of it if I were in the server. Um, especially, like, I know Buffoon and Vodka, like, they know when the streams happen because they're here so often. Um, like, you guys know it's Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. But I feel like a lot of people in the Discord, like, don't even know that I stream on a regular schedule. Um, but... We'll think about that. I'll workshop that, talk it out with some people. Um, I can even do a poll. If people don't want the everyone tag, then I won't do it. But I just feel like a lot of people uh, don't know when the schedule is. So I'm trying to like really... Because um, the turnout was was bigger than, than it had. Maybe it's because we did the bracket. Um, maybe it's because of the YouTube post that I'm, I'm writing off of some of that KH3 boss ranking um, momentum. I'm, I'm not sure. But, um, you know, we played Dream Drop for like, you know, a month or two. Yeah, I just posted the video. Yeah. It could be it too. Uh, people who like to vote. So it, it could be it. Um, but Dream Drop was like, you know, we're like in the 50s and we were like solidly um, 80s to 100s today. So that was, I really appreciate the turnout and you sticking with me and um, expressing your opinion on these on these worlds. I had a lot of fun. I love these ROM brackets. I'm sorry we ran out of music a, a little bit ago here. So it's just me yelling into the void. But um, you know where to find me. The aforementioned Discord. If you have not joined, if you came from YouTube, you can check that out. Um, I have my uh, Twitter and my Patreon. Um, we're making some pretty good progress towards those goals on Patreon. Um, let me check out what we're at right now. As at 150, I've, I've promised two videos. And we were at, uh, well, it's December 1st, so some people's cards uh, I'd still have to uh, process the payment. So we're back to where we started, actually. But before, before the day started, we were at like 138 or 9, I think. But now uh, we have to wait for some payments to process. And that'll uh, show us um canceled but even though they're they're in limbo right now so we'll see what happens with that but i appreciate all the new patrons nonetheless um for five dollars a month you can help me uh pursue future content creation if you are so inclined but just you being here and watching the vids and uh showing up and, and chatting with others um is more than enough um so let's see what we got going on here um is there like a new, like maybe someone just randomly playing Kingdom Hearts that we can raid? Um, let's see. Can I like search by category? How do I do that? Because Bio is uh, Bio is playing FF14, but we did raid Bio the other day. And I think we, we should try to raid um, new people more often, you know? Um, is there a way that I can do that? Go to search? Just look up KH? Can I like, uh, how do I do that though? <laughs> Is that, does that happen in, uh, it says raid channel. I have to pick a channel to raid. Um, oh, I can just search that. Okay, that works. Um, so let's see. Uh, how about, like, let's find a new face, you know? Anime Flareon was the first person to show up here when I searched Kingdom Hearts. So let's raid. And everyone be nice. Um, you know, just, uh, be, you know, throw some emotes. And uh, be kind, you know. Don't don't make a bad impression. Um, let's raid Anime Flareon, who uh, I don't know if they're playing through Kingdom Hearts for the first time or not, um, but it looks like they're in the Gizmo Shop in Traverse Town. So just uh, be safe, be kind, be courteous, be nice when you raid. Um, give them a follow. It looks like they're you know they're having fun playing the game. So um, until next time, I'll see you on Saturday at four. Don't know what we're doing, but until then, peace out.